Welcome back to the State of the Ark podcast. My name is Mike. My name's Kason. And we are joined once again by Chris and Eric from Retrograde Amnesia. Fellas, welcome back. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having us back. You can uh, get rid of us soon, but we're back for, for one more. <laughs> <laughs> At least one more round. At least one more. Yes. Um, there was kind of a question as to whether or not I'd be able to do this like one week after... Yeah, my wife. Congratulations! Had a new kid, by so. the way. Yeah, congrats. Oh, thank you. We, we thank have you. a uh, we have a hard and fast rule on our podcast where yeah. we never record three episodes in a row. So that the rule is never do three. And I also apply that to fatherhood. Never do three. <laughs> uh, I have two, and I'm never going to do three. So uh, bless you for <laughs> never do for, three for taking well, the plunge. Four. I mean, I'm going for four. Right? Oh, okay. So. Well, you know, I, I'm, not, you, I'm not stopping it. Once you're outnumbered, then you know. I know, then you, who cares? I'm just looking for love. eight yeah, once we're yeah, outnumbered, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, that's how that's how humans did it most of the time. <laughs> Somebody mentioned to me, said, you only have two hands, you should only have two kids. How can you possibly take care of a third? And I'm like, I don't know, ask every human who lived ever until like 100 <laughs> yeah. years ago. Yeah. That's how we got to, how we got to eight billion people on the planet. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's part. It's part just of it. don't put them all on a colony ship with, uh, you know, that thing on it. Exactly. <laughs> Not a good idea. Okay, so um, this is a little complicated, but uh, last episode that I recorded with you guys, we actually got all the way up through the Black, For or Black Moon Forest, but I cut that episode in half. So in the last episode, we would have talked about Lahan Village all the way up through Black Moon Forest. Through so or just to? All the way through it. So oh, now it's okay. leading up to... Um, getting into Ave territory, going up to Dazzle, yes. and then getting all the way through to meeting Bart and getting to essentially the pirate, uh, the pirate hideout, but I, I think I kind of called it at when you rendezvous Once with the Once you get there. You know, this, this is so, cruiser. it was kind of disappointing because you <laughs> texted me and you said, Kay, play up until Yggdrasil. And I was like, sick, Yggdrasil's in this game? Like the tree, the tree of life from ancient Norse or specifically like English mythology? That is so sweet. Because it makes sense, Garden of Eden, tree of life. Yeah. And like, no, it's like a, I was pretty disappointed. Because I was oh. like, hey dude, I don't know when I'm gonna reach this tree Mike's talking about, but we're in, the, we're in a cave for the past like, you know, three hours. By and the then, time you guys are done with this, you are going to love the Sand Cruiser Yggdrasil. We love it. Okay, okay. You will grow to love it as well. Every, well everybody I, on that ship has a backstory. Unfortunately, I just my expectations were set at a different yeah. level. <laughs> also, uh, I guess you could look forward to Xenoblade 2 where they actually have the true I've yes. seen the images world tree of that. in it. So That's exciting. That'll be fun. We'll get to that someday, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, we just left Black Moon Forest. And so Saitan and Fay are heading to Dazil, or Dazil, I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced, but it's uh, mm. that first city in the desert there, which is serving as more or less the like center of operations for the excavations that are happening in Ave. And if you remember back to the, like, the opening kind of title crawl, the paragraphs of text, uh, both Ave and Kislev are excavating these gears or technology from like an ancient civilization and they take those to uh, an institution, a religious institution called Ethos to repair them. And Ethos kind of decides which country, <laughs> you know, gets which things and so they have kind of a firm hand in like manipulating how this war goes, right? On top of that you have the Gebler mm -hmm. force which is helping Ave sort of like even the odds and now sort of get a little bit of momentum over Kislev in this war. So with that kind of background in place, we uh, find our way to Dazzle. Um, Saitan is saying that they need to find parts to repair the Veltal uh, gear that uh, Fay has been piloting, right? Yeah. All this time. Um, was it pronounced that way? Veltal, because it's a Veltal. German word. Kind of like Weiss yeah, yeah, from Mir, yeah. yes, yes. right? I've been saying Veltal the whole time, but I, it's mistaken. It's, it's, it's technically okay. Veltal. By the way, Dazzle is Dajiru, so Dazzle. Oh, well, Dazzle. Well, in the Japanese Dazzle. it's Dajiru. Okay. I don't know what they there went for, but that's what it is in Japanese. Sweet. So, um, there's a couple examples of Aizuchi <laughs> that I wanted <laughs> to point to here. Yay. That kind of gave me this sense on my initial playthrough that Faye is kind of just not a smart person. 
You know, it's not just the Aizuchi though, because um, what is it, Satan? Who he he kind of explains at least at one point in the forest at the fire where he's yeah. like, oh well. You know, he, he doesn't know much outside of his little village. He literally knows nothing outside of his village. Like he's, so it's not just, you would, you would think that way of him, not just through the Aizuchi, but also through the way Satan kind of like refers to him yeah. as like being unacquainted with anything basically. Yeah, just like ignorant to the yeah, outside yeah. world or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, in the forest, in Black Moon Forest, Satan explained we need to get, uh, we need to repair this gear, it's like the, the knee joint or whatever, there's a part on it. So right. we're gonna go here and we're gonna find a part. And then they arrive there <laughs> and he says, okay, we, we go to the kind of like the, the ethos headquarters here and yeah. they'll have the part we need yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then Faye is repeating, repair, well, Veltal? <laughs> and so, like, so yes, it, that's why it's, we're here, Faye. It's, it's a question mark. <laughs> It's it's marked with a question, right? Yeah. But well, I, and I don't know this specifically, but I, what I believe he was likely saying is, you know, where do you this car or where do you this ne? Something like if he says ne, then that would be not a question. It's it, if you translate it to English, it's technically a question. Yeah. But it's not so much a question to the person; it's more a question you're asking the question to yourself, but out loud, like, oh, yeah. so this is. So we're, so at, at Welltal, repair Welltal, huh? Like it, but when you write it down, you kind of have to put a question mark because yeah. it only makes sense that it's technically a question, but it doesn't mean he's asking the question necessarily. Right. This so, is also you know, the days like go, before go ahead, go ahead. there's actually a quest log available for players. So reminding the player of some objective, no matter how uh, nebulous it may be, can kind of keep them on track toward a goal or destination. Okay, so yeah. kind of a gameplay reason for it. Now, that is good because I am not a fan of how quickly you get into battles within the random encounters within this game. Oh, you mean like You how walk for like 10 seconds, it's like boom, The battle. encounter rate. 10 seconds battle. Yeah, the encounter rate, that would <laughs> yeah. be it. It's so quick, it can take you a long time to traverse a pretty short a pretty short distance, and by then it's like, what was I doing again? There was at Why least, am I here? There was at least two examples when I was in the stalactite cavern where I got out of a battle and I went into like the menu to change a piece of equipment or I don't know, check my status on death blows or something mm. like that. And I went out and I literally took one step forward <laughs> and another encounter <laughs> happened. And I, d I, don't crazy. Know, I don't know if this is true, but there was someone in my Discord who thought he had heard that even just changing the camera angles, I don't know if you guys have heard this, and if you uh -huh. haven't, it's, it might not be true, but just shifting the camera can also initiate a random encounter. Have you guys heard that? I've experienced close to that, but usually it's like kind of when you're like stuck on the edge of like some geometry and your character's kind of sliding down or, or something like uh, that where it feels like which there is a battle Which happens all the time, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The games the, like, oh yeah, never mind. Uh, yeah, every time I go back to this game, I think about how much I hate the encounter, right? But every, every time I start playing it, like it's never as bad as I remember every single time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But th yeah, there are, there are some pretty tough moments. Those among us still playing on the original PlayStation, you can actually hear the disc stop spinning before the battle loads, so you oh, can kind of really? get a preview and prepared for yeah. it, so you don't want to make uh, that no jump. Um, also, <laughs> does it interesting. threaten your suspension of disbelief that Faye, the uh, country boy from the small town, is now slaughtering Sandmen without any argument? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> you know... That's just kind of a... That's a difficulty of, 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 I guess, the, just the JRPG... The of the medium. Structure, yeah, the fact that there are random encounters. Yeah. And this is actually something I read too um, that was maybe um, like a regret or, or something they wish they had had more time to change later on. Um, and it had to do with like the pastoral feel of the game yeah. that he wanted to get away from the further they got into it and that he didn't have time to go back and change for the introduction so much. But he was like, you know, it would make more sense if the enemies that you fought were not like, we're not monsters in the sense of like in other RPGs, right? Like where the, the world is littered with monsters or yeah, in right. this case, just like citizens of Ave, I would think, just like Sandman and stuff. Just people but that need to die. That they should yes. all be wells or like maybe it's Vels, I'm not sure, but wells or just other gears and um, like robots and things like that. And so like mm. there's, there's probably an element where uh, the enemy choice, I guess, the enemies you encounter in the groupings might not make the most sense. 
you know, like forest elves and things like that, where if they had had time to adjust this, they probably would have just replaced most of the monsters with wells. Yeah. And we'll get into that later, what wells means, but hmm. um, it would make more sense if those were primarily the enemies you fought. There are a few spa spaces in this game where it feels like the the monsters that you fight are from a particular ecosystem, but there's also other ones that don't make any sense. Like, the stalactite yeah. cave is, I think, one that works, because there's sandmen walking down there, they've got their gears with them, and there's the, the sure, occasional... Sure, because they're excavating ruins yeah. and all yeah, that stuff. But, yeah, yeah, but But there, you will you will notice l later in the game, there are some stuff that's like, why is this even... Why is this dinosaur yeah. in this uh, <laughs> spaceship? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, there, there's not too much that I took note of, aside from Big Joe. Yes. And some of the things that he says in Ave, but I want to pass it to you guys uh, to, for any notes that you took on um, Dazzle and uh, anything that you thought was interesting to bring up there. I do get a little bit of a kind of a, a Star Wars vibe from this because yes, we're traveling sure. through the desert. Obviously, we're fighting the Sandman, as we just alluded to, and we're going to kind of an outpost of kind of... Uh, I don't know. Like it's a, it's not. It's part of a state, but it, there is a, a certain level of of anarchy that <laughs> that that uh, happens here. And you know, it's it's Faye, the young guy with powers who doesn't know how to um, manifest them, along with Saiten, who is his mentor, who is holding very important information back from him at this point in time. So it's got that kind of Luke Skywalker and uh, Ben Kenobi traveling to Moss Eisley feel to it. It does. It really does. Yeah. I have a couple things. One, something I didn't notice the first two times I played this game is every city has its own crest, including Dazzle. When you first walk in, its crest is emblazoned on the archways of the entrance and exit. And if you look throughout the rest of the game, uh, I'm not going to say their names, but the other cities also have their own crests or flags. Mm. Um, second, Dazzle, I think, is the first place where you encounter a demi-human. There's like a moose guy in the second building on the left. Yeah, there's mm. also like a gopher guy that's that, that's in the middle of town as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And then there's also some like local politicking. If you the thing in the center of town is actually a fountain that controls the water in the desert. And yeah. there's some guy that manages the water house that mentions how the ethos kind of takes priority over the resources and drains them and they don't have access to their water. But he also says the ethos greatly improved the water system. So, you know, neutral as to whether or not the ethos is a bad or good influence on this town. Yeah, I noticed that because you go into that little building where they're like controlling the water system and then right next door to that there's like a little family and there's a woman in there who's like, oh, they shut off our water again. Like, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They must be needing it for some kind of, you know, gear or something or other and it's like, oh, so these people basically, uh, their, their utilities are <laughs> being controlled by, by, the, by the ethos and um, yeah. so their water can get shut off at any time. And that, that, that's kind of like a scary thing, especially when you live in a desert like that. Like your oh, water yeah. all of a sudden gets shut off and it's like... Well, oh, when oh. you're in a desert, whoever controls the water controls everything. Yeah. Controls the people, controls life and everything. Yeah, just a preview of, you the, know, t the year 2050. The water and the spice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the water and the spice. Did you guys get the... There's, there's an optional scene that you can get if you're kind of roaming the outskirts of town where, where Faye will stop and say, hey, Doc, what's that? Yep. Yeah. Yep, and then it shows. And it shows you see an the, excavation. Yeah, right? you see yeah, like a, basically that. a gear being like lifted out of a the ground. A freaking right? huge gear, and like, it a, looked bigger than a normal one. And it's a, it's not a, pre, or excuse me, it's not a rendered thing. It's like a bitmap. It's like a pre-rendered uh, yeah, nice. scene that we're looking at, and you don't get a ton of that in the game. There are some certain areas where th those kind of pre-rendered bitmaps, for lack of a better term, are used as backgrounds, but like this is the first one where it's just the scene and they're showing you so something. I, th I thought that was uh, unique. I've not, not seen another one in this game. Yeah, and it's interesting that like, you can only initiate it by kind of like hugging like the inner side of the yeah. wall um, <laughs> that like borders the town. You, you kind of hug mm -hmm. that wall around. There's like just, I guess, I don't know, a specific tile or something that where you land on that, it'll like initiate this little cutscene or whatever yeah. where they talk about the excavations that are happening. Uh, so, kind of a cool little thing there. And then you go into the tavern and there's a character uh, named Big Joe in there. And this is kind of just a, a rule of thumb for Japanese role-playing games, but if a character has a portrait, that usually means they're more important. <laughs> they're Big Joe's very role. important. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Rather than everybody else who does not have a character portrait, that's just an NPC. Though I did find that the NPC dialogue generally uh, in Dazzle all was pretty, like, 
it was all pretty good in terms of either yeah. like foreshadowing or giving you a hint of what you're going to do next or like I found most of the NPC dialogue here to be like really thoughtfully done. It's not just like a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, I think the town and I love the town theme too. All of Mitsuda's music in this is, is excellent. He's my favorite composer, uh, games composer of all time. Um, big fan of Mitsuda, but like yeah, the song that plays here specifically is really, yeah. really, really well done. Yeah, it's awesome. It's unique to this town too. I don't think it's repeated anywhere else in the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I, I kind of copied down some of the, or one of the lines of dialogue that Big Joe says uh, over in the bar um, that I thought might be like pretty interesting foreshadowing. Um, you know, we're not going to spoil anything, of course. Kaysen has not played the game, but uh, it's something that I found interesting as, you know, playing this, having played the game before. Because you have to talk to him a few times. He'll, he has like three different lines of dialogue, and then uh, he'll cycle those three. But I think on the third, he says, you think you know about yourself? I could introduce myself right now, and by tomorrow be a different person. Right. If you didn't understand that, I'll repeat. And then he hit, because he's drunk, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, don't catch, or don't count your chickens before they hatch. Um, so you think you know about yourself, I can introduce myself right now, and by tomorrow be a different person. I thought that that was interesting. And this is, I think, the second time now, because you mentioned this last time, mm -hmm. too, um, how the, the, the drunk guy in the tavern in Lahan also had, like, this really yeah. important piece yeah. of foreshadowing. <laughs> I mean, have you ever uh, talked to a drunk guy at a, at a tavern before? <laughs> in real life, they typically have foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, and this is this is kind of a trope of JRPGs too. But it's like, if something is a myth or a legend that somebody dismisses, they'll like tell you the legend, and they'll be like, "Eh, but that's just a legend. Yeah. Don't well, pay attention we, to that." We we see that happen <laughs> in this playthrough, specifically yeah. yes. in the cave. Yes. But, or um, or yeah. if it's a drunk guy in a tavern who seems to be talking nonsense, they're usually one hundred percent correct, and yeah. that's exactly what <laughs> it's exactly the case, or it's always true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway. The idea is that the alcohol brings out your inner self, right? Sure. So you drink and you say like, the inner, you expose your There's no your inhibitions. Self. So yes, you're, you're, yes. you're speaking the truth when you're like non. When you're drunk, yeah. Or, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Everybody's trying to be Oscar. Was it Oscar Wilde who drank absinthe when he, uh, when, when he wrote? It's a possibility. Yeah, I don't I'm know. Not, Sorry. I am not aware of that. <laughs> yeah, that's the fake net shit. Also, um, at some point, Seiden says about Big Joe, this man likes to make his presence felt, which is also uh, going to be primarily true for Big Joe throughout the rest of this game. Yep. And we'll see him a lot more, so uh, this is just the first encounter. But I copied another um, line from another NPC who says, I wonder who built these ruins. Some say an ancient civilization which ruled this land long ago built them. But after looking at the results of this geologic test, I have my doubts. It's a perfect example of, again, the, the archetype. Some say. <laughs> the truther. Long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you sh it's always the truth, right? The NPCs always tell you the myths and legends, and they always doubt them, but they're always, always the truth. So, <laughs> so they're, they're planting a setup here about an ancient civilization uh, that built the ruins that they're excavating all of these gears and stuff from, right? Um, and so then you go into the Ethos headquarters there. Um, they mostly repair civilian gears in this particular location. So yeah. they don't have the parts that you need for Veltal. And yeah. so Saitan decides like, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to go out into the desert to where these ruins are at and see if I can like find, you know, um, uh, the part that we need from either an excavation or if there are, you know, battles that have happened and there are gears that have, you know, been abandoned or whatever, I can, like, sca uh, scavenge something. Because apparently, so this site, because you mentioned that there's, um, like, both sides, uh, uh, Ave and what's the other one? The Kislev. K Kislev. Yeah. Uh, they will often have skirmishes yeah. um, right along the border there because they're both trying to access the resources that are underground. Um, and because of that, uh, there's just a kind of, like, battlefield littered with, with you know, military pieces and, and different gears and just parts just all over the place. So yep. he thinks he can go get find what he needs over there. Yep. So he takes off and in a, leaves in a, Faye behind. Does he take the buggy? Is that what happens? I think he, he, takes rents, he rents yeah, yeah, some yeah. kind of uh, like desert vehicle. And basically immediately Faye is like, I wonder if he's okay. I better go out and check. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, ah. Uh, and if yeah, you yeah, just the, split up and then both went alone. Like, what you're you you're about to say what I was going to say. Go what ahead. is it? 
Oh, if, yeah, if you if you talk to the guy who rented you the sand buggy, he's he's like you should not have let him gone by yourself or by by, by yeah. himself. Yes, and that's so true. That you, yeah. The player knows what to do. So, of course, Faye runs out into the desert with no vehicle, no supplies, you know what's funny? nothing. Just I heard out. so I, I we talked to the guy. He's like nobody should go out there alone by themselves. Um I I guess I took a little bit different to that. Maybe I read it wrong, uh, but I took that to be like, we shouldn't go out by ourselves. <laughs> so you decided to wait it around? <laughs> and it's like, well, I didn't know exactly what to do, but I figured he wasn't, I knew because of this is a video game, I knew I was gonna have to go look for him. Yeah. But um, I did not read that guy's dialogue and think immediately, and this might be, it might be my fault, I may have read it wrong, but I felt like he was telling me not to go out alone. Yeah, and it, you can go talk to Big Jill again too, and he'll kind of encourage mm. you to leave too. He'll yeah. be like, hey, your friend out there all by himself, like you better not abandon your friends, especially if they're lady friends, right? Like, yeah. Hey. Uh, um, so, joke. anyways, <laughs> there's also See? kind of a, a weird conversation on when Faye and Sidon go to the thinking bridge. When Faye sees a window for escape, and he's like, "Well, I guess they don't have the parts. We probably just can't fix Welltall." And right. Sidon continually manipulates him to just push forward. He says, "Oh, well, you probably want to get Veltal far away from the village, don't you?" Yeah. And yes, he does. <clears throat> oh, because point. the people are going to fight and they might yeah. destroy Lehan again. And it's <laughs> like, wait, wasn't it already like completely nuked? Like, yeah, isn't, isn't it? Who gone? cares <laughs> if they destroy it again? But Satan, he's got yeah. the, the logic on his side. And that always felt like, suspicious. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Very suspicious. I also there was there was a, a line that uh, Satan says in that in that uh, exchange that I liked. Mm -hmm. He says. Anyway, the fear is often worse than the danger itself. We should not let such fears hold us back. Yes. So he's just, he's definitely really nudging Faye forward. And, you know, and, and even when Faye's expressing like, oh, like, I just kind of want to go back to Lahan and just like help them rebuild and stuff. He's, he's like, well, you can do that if you want, but let me give you all of these reasons why you should actually keep going. He's like definitely nudging him forward. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, um, there's something going on with Saitan. And I mentioned this last time when we talked and, and I felt even more this way this time. And I, I kind of have two feelings about this. Like, one, it's been probably four years since I played the game. So hmm. part of me, and it's very long game, and, and like you've said a couple of different times, the game in some way sort of expects you to remember something that they like dropped at the beginning 50 hours later and there's just so many things you for, can forget or just like lose track of because yeah. there's so much going on. So part of this is probably me just forgetting a lot of things. But the other, the other part of me is like, I feel really dumb for not having seen how heavy-handed this foreshadowing yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just the nature of the second playthrough, and it's just like, you play it the second time, and it's just like, you just see it all. And that's why I'm glad we have Case in here, to, yeah. to give feelings about what you feel about Saitan, because I wanted to ask you specifically about that. Like, what do you feel about that character right now? What are your feelings about him? Well, so I'm looking at this from, just because of what I know of about the game, I'm looking at this from like an archetypal perspective of sure. like he is the savant, he is the wise um, person who's going to lead us. He's the Obi Wan Kenobi. He's he's going to lead us along the path Gandalf style, right? Yeah. To where we need to go. Now it's obvious he knows a lot more than he's letting on, but yeah. but um, to me, it's like he knows more. One of the big things in the old forest. Um, I said the old forest, Black, um, Black Moon Forest, because I just mentioned Gandalf. Yeah. Okay, uh, Black Moon Forest um, is that he speaks that language of the that Ellie um, speaks. That Ellie yeah. speaks, and she lives in a whole like completely different place, speaks a whole different language, and um, he speaks it. And so it's like, hey, this guy's been around, and he even says, "Oh, I know more about the world than most." Let's just leave it at that, and that's yeah. all. That's all he says. Right. So it's like, okay, this guy has has seen the world, right? And he's leading us somewhere, but like, I like. Is there a specific question? No, no. I'm glad. Okay, <laughs> that was that was big, that actually clarified. I, he to seems me. to me like the wise sage that, who's leading that, us along. That clarified something to me. Um, yeah. I actually just I kind of remembered now what I thought back when I played the game for the first time too, and I, I think I did just kind of feel like like you just said, Saitan has just he's well traveled or he's yeah he's been like around. Gandalf right like he's he's yeah. He knows about things because he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's been around the world or something like that, I guess was my assumption. 
But do um, you do you trust him as a first time player? I, I well, the fact that you're asking that kind of makes me wonder. But well, um, I, you know, when yes. we went back to this game for our <laughs> podcast, we didn't really remember how how this how how it paid off, and so we were very very mistrustful of him just because of you know the way the way he's acting this 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 whole time. So. There is there is very good reason to distrust him. One of them being so whenever um, when Ellie tried to get info from him. He wouldn't procure any. He's constantly asking questions yeah. to learn more. Yeah. But when someone asks about him, there's nothing. And there's another part later on in this section that we played through uh, where we get to ask him some questions. And he, he doesn't answer our questions. So I, I see there is reason to be suspicious of him because he is very evasive. Uh, but at the same time, he is like very helpful yes. <laughs> so also i don't have i don't HP have any qualms with him at the moment despite yes. the fact that like obi-wan or gandalf he has had many experiences and knows things that i don't like for instance with obi-wan kenobi he kept from luke that luke's father was darth vader he kept that from luke on purpose right and when he revealed it luke wasn't stoked about it but Luke kind of just didn't believe him, I guess. But it, it didn't make me think that Obi Wan was a was a bad guy. Yeah. It was like you know Obi Wan hid some stuff, but probably with good reason. Likewise, Gandalf, with Bilbo, yeah. he's hiding tons of stuff. Like Bilbo, if if it weren't for me, you you would have died fifty times over on this trip, yeah. right? Um, but and they kind of hint at that within the movie. Peter Jack. One of the good, nice touches of the Hobbit movie is where he opens the contract and it falls to the ground and it's got all the provisions in case you lose your limbs, in case of death <laughs> or whatever the dismemberment. This is this is like what you're entitled to receive should they recover the treasure. And um, it's it's funny, but it's almost like in the movie they're like Gandalf, can you promise I'll come back? And he's like, No, no, I can't. Uh, but that doesn't make him a a bad guy. There's yeah. reason to be suspicious of Gandalf because he's got all sorts of connections in all sorts of weird places. I, but you don't mistrust him. That is he, an interesting. He seems like he's there for a good purpose. That's an interesting parallel, I think, specifically with the Hobbit, because mm. in the Hobbit, Gandalf is being very pushy. To get very, Bilbo it's like he knows go. something about Bilbo specifically, yeah. and he's pushing him to do something that probably no one should ever push someone to do. Yeah. You could, like, hey, you really want to slay that dragon, don't you? Uh -huh, there's a dragon right up there. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just like go and steal its gold? Wouldn't that be great? Like, I don't no, know much who about who does that. <laughs> I don't know much about Lord of the Rings, but if you just took the conversation that you just had about Gandalf and Bilbo and inserted Faye and Sighton, it would work because the relationship yeah. is, is is very similar. It there would. is a power that Faye has that he doesn't understand. Sighton seems to know more than Faye and more than the player, and yeah, uh, he's trying to. Not just harness it, I don't think, but he's trying to correctly harness it and, and, and make sure that what happened in the in Lahan village doesn't happen again, but also he's very, very curious about, about what, what the nature of yes. it is. Yes. Yeah. Likewise, Gandalf with the ring, with Frodo, where he's just like, I think I know what that is, but you keep it for now, and yeah. I'll go do some research. And yeah. it's like, maybe Frodo, well, anyways. But it's, it's, there, there's a lot of, we can go down a lot of different places, because this archetype is used, like, Mm -hmm. All over the place. It's a hero's uh, journey, like exactly. Archetype. It's a hero's journey show. But Joseph Campbell talks a lot about this specific type of you know character. Um, but um, one thing I did want to mention is that Satan. Every now and then, we often will see him um, outside, away from us, where we leave, and he's there, and he's just kind of like he'll say a few words to himself, like, "Oh, so could it be?" Something like oh, that. Uh, my favorite that happens is like several times. the cruel dark destiny of God. Like he's yeah, yeah. watching Faye in the gear back in Lahan, and he's like. I guess he's kind of op he's kind of talking to Dan at the same time, but there's two things he says there, like, "Oh no, if he awakens here, it could be like a disaster." Oh, and they put "he" in, in quotes. quotes. Yeah, that I thought that was interesting. Uh, he's yeah. kind of talking to Dan, but also kind of to himself, like Faye is bound by the cool, cruel, dark destiny of God. <laughs> to Dan, yeah, and it's Dan's just like, this what? hardcore like <laughs> yeah. line from Saitan that he's he, he does that so, a lot. Says so often, in and game. really, that's like Gandalf when he's like. So be it. Or like, yeah. anyways, it's there. There are lines like that that are very comparable. Center Gears has uh, the dialogue has a strange relationship with M dashes and quotes that never really fall into a comprehensible rhythm, but they're there nevertheless. Yeah. Kind yeah, I, I don't know what to make of those. Yeah. They're in the Japanese there's, as well. There's They'll some do examples. These, um, brackets, like the greater yeah. than, less than brackets. There's some and examples coming up once we actually like get the graph and stuff and Saitan talking about like the time of the gospel. That where it's yes. like it's weird. I don't know why the, the are there, time of the 
Gospel, yeah. <laughs> and it's like you could just say time and gospel. I read the <laughs> Japanese. It's they're in the little quote things, but I, it's weird. It's interesting. Yeah. Anyways, um, so you leave. You go after Saitan in the desert. Uh, you're kind of following these gears as they're like bounding through, like hoping yeah. to lead you the right way. He steals a motorcycle. I, I love those shots. They're just, <laughs> they're just great, really man. cool where he's like, he's like ramping up yeah. dunes and like, I was wondering, like I was like, are they going to let us drive that motorcycle? And uh. <laughs> But I just got like this sense, uh, it's almost like a nostalgic sense of just coolness, right? Like how cool yeah. these games were at the time. Like yeah, they just, yeah. Like, it, it, it reminded me of, like, the motorcycle chase sequence in Final Fantasy VII. Just yes, how cool it me was. too, exactly. When, when, the, when you yeah. know, uh, Tifa is, like, motioning everyone forward to jump in the truck, and then Cloud just shows up on that motorcycle, like, up the yeah. stairs, like, breaks out the window. These games just had this, like, coolness to them, this style that was just so awesome. <clears throat> and I yeah. really got that sense from uh, a lot of the stuff happening here with the gears and with him like stealing the motorcycle, and it, it, it kind of also feels a little bit like um, Return of the Jedi. Those like uh, I don't know what the oh the speeders, the speeders yeah, the, that the going forest, through the force. Yeah, yeah um, totally. It's just it's just really cool. It just like took me to a time in my childhood, like how cool things were back then. <laughs> but uh, he uh, steals the motorcycle. Uh, he's still looking for him, and then Saitan kind of just shows up in Veltal. Yeah, and, while uh, we're being attacked by some other. Hey, uh, there was a, a very specific event that happened on Faye's journey out there before he encountered Oh, he Sidon. saw like a flying oh, saucer, right? Oh, yes. The thing yeah. passing yes. overhead, yes. Like the ground rumbles and you think it's going to be another gear because gears have been hopping by. And then there's a pull-out yeah. shot from the sky of a force field protected UFO hovering in the <laughs> desert. And then it's yeah, a slow reveal crazy. before the camera switches to Faye's point of view instead looking up at it and it just disappears. Like I don't yeah. even you think know, like Faye runs after it, but that's that's it. Yeah. That that force field around it too. I did want to add. I, I I vaguely can see it in my mind. It looks like a dreidel, <laughs> just an ancient <laughs> Jewish yeah. toy. Yeah. But the force field around it has like a bump on the bottom and on top, and it looks it looks very interesting. But also very not not too long before that moment in the forest, we saw another random giant spaceship kind of fly over. Huge, huge. Spaceship yeah, that was the Gebler through ship. the leaves. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is multiple times now where we've seen things above us that uh, it seems like uh, Faye has not seen them before. He's mm. like, he, you know, in his little Lehan village, apparently those things didn't fly over there. So yeah. wherever he's going to now has high traffic of unusual flying aircraft. Yeah. And this time the guy who knows everything is not with us, unfortunately. Exactly. So we can't just can't it. know. Yeah. But it's a dreidel. It's a flying dreidel. There's a lot. There's a lot they, they, they give you. I also it's, think it's interesting that Faye's first time by himself out in a polygonal environment, they take away your compass. So there's oh. no real direction. I mean, I think if you just walk forward, you'll get there. But I think it is possible yeah. to get to a few more screens before you ultimately reach your destination. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, I actually did not notice that because no, that little compass either. is always in the corner. So you're yeah, saying in, in the desert in sequence, game. they don't have the compass at all. Right. It's gone. Wow. Is that signifying how you can get lost in the desert? Well, because if you if you try to go out there before doing the dazzle sequence, um, like before going through everything there with Saitan decides he's going to drive out and like try and find parts. Mm. If you try to go out in the desert before that, you'll just get lost out there. Like you can't really progress going that way. You hit a plot wall, right? Mm, um, so you have to go back to dazzle. So. Yeah, I did not even notice that. That's crazy. The sanders look cool. great, by the way. You get out there yeah. and you look up top and you're looking around, and the way they render that environment is just beautiful. Yeah, super cool. So then, Saitan arrives in Veltal. He describes how he has a lot of trouble piloting it. Faye should get in. He keeps pushing him to, yeah, wink, to wink. pilot the gear. And he's like, I don't want to pilot the gear. I destroyed Lahan with that thing. Get away from me. I don't want it. He's like, no, now, you, you should. This <laughs> is <in>. following. <laughs> so this is following the hero's journey so, so well. I love it because... There is, within the hero's journey, um, within Joseph Campbell's book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, he talks about the monomyth, and one of them is there's always the call to action, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the um, kind of hallmarks of the, of the, um, of the, what, the hero's journey, I guess, monomyth, is that yeah. uh, the hero refuses the call to yep. action initially. Yep. He refuses it, and he doesn't want to go. It's the same thing with Bilbo, with the Hobbit and everything. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. And then eventually... You know, curiosity it. gets the better of you, right? Mm. And Graf even mentions this very soon here. It's like you want, you really do want to know, and yeah. so you're gonna do it. You you're, you know you shouldn't, but you're gonna you're gonna do it. You're gonna do everything I want you to do. Uh, but 
that is right with the hero's journey, with the refusal of the call to adventure, which he also does um, earlier on as well, before we go to the forest, because we're like, I'm not getting back into that thing. Um, so there's multiple times where we can refuse, but at some point I'm guessing, well, at some point it, I, I'm pretty sure it already happens, we kind of stop refusing, and we're just like, yeah. hey, we're gonna keep getting in this thing over and over, and we just kind of, we forget it, and then we accept the call to action and can move forward mm -hmm. towards you know the next stage in the hero's journey. Yeah. And so uh, I guess I failed to mention that the reason it's important that he showed up when he did Saitan with the, with the gear is because there are Ave gears that have kind of like stopped Faye on the motorcycle that yeah. he stole. And, and so like Satan like him. shoots them, right? Because they're about to kill us. Yeah. But and, he's like, I can't do anything. All I, I can only shoot them. I can't do anything else. <laughs> so you get you in it, it, you fight them. And yeah. one thing I took a note of here that I found very hilarious is I love how because you, you can do some death blows in the gears at this time. So you can like beat them up and knock them down and these robots will fall over and then they'll get up, run back into position just to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is so yes. 90s. Mortal That's Kombat. so classic. <laughs> it's that really happens funny. a lot with the, with the 3D rendered enemies. It happens a lot. It happens with the boss that we're going to fight later with Calamity. Yeah, it's like, it's like bam, 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 bam. You knock him yeah. down and he, he gets up, he like rushes back into place and just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have no other way to, to die, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I, have to be, I have to get in my position to do my enemy. Uh, anyways, I love that. really funny. Just, you know, classic 90s. Um, so then, now this is where we're going to have a lot to talk about, I feel. Yeah, that's where most of my notes are. So this is where Graf shows up. And it's the same gear that we saw back in Lahan, right? So there was kind of a gear that was leading the others, and specifically a gear that noticed Faye was freaking out when he saw Timothy coming back. And uh, there was a gear that kind of stops and looked at, looks down at Timothy, and so Faye's really afraid, like, no, don't harm them. They have nothing to do with this. Stop. And he's, like, freaking out. And Graf, the, the gear that Graf was piloting, took notice of that, and specifically turns and gives the order to shoot Timothy. So, like, mm. Graf saw that. Anyways, this is the same so guy. So he's paying attention to, to specifically to Faye. Yeah. The, okay. the, the composition of the shot here is really cool, too. He's, like, silhouetted by the giant orange moon. The moon, moon, yeah. The it's, like, and perfect. Um, and, and uh, of course, like, Graf's music comes on. It, it's It's... There's definitely some Star Wars parallels here. You pointed them out already a little bit with, uh, you know, the Sandmen and, and like coming into Moss Eisley, you know, with Dazzle. Mm. But there's definitely some Star Wars parallels with Graf too. And I, I, in fear of not wanting to spoil anything, there's certain things I don't want to mention, but I, I want to like kind of put a note in it to return to it later maybe. Mm. But. The, the, even the music seems to borrow maybe like a couple of notes from like the Imperial March to me. Uh, <laughs> like it okay, sounds okay. a little bit similar mm. to that. Um, but uh, let me pass this first over to you guys uh, to talk a little bit about this scene and, and your thoughts on it. I think it's important to note that most of the time Groff is framed, part of his whole vibe and entrance is if you look close, he's riding outside of his own gear. Yes, like he's he like standing essentially on the ghost shoulder, right? Thing. Yeah, uh, um, I which think is uh, kind of like a power. Like he didn't need another power move on top of the existing blood <laughs> entrance because he's on like a, a like a mountain thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. already he's, he's like in a power. And then position he's on top of that, tall. and he's even on top of the thing that's on top of the thing. Yeah, so. oh, yeah. he's just stacking them. Uh, yeah, and I think that this is the moment when I first played this game as a as a teenager, where I was like, okay, I'm in. Like you. As soon as this scene comes on, you kind of theoretically look down at your feet, and you're like, you're already halfway down the quicksand. You're like, in this game, you have to know who this is and what, what all these mysteries are. And I love this scene, too, because we and we talked about over the course of the past couple episodes is that this game has introduced so many mysteries with the intro scene, uh, with what's going on in Lahan Village, all the stuff that Saiten is dropping. But now it's introducing... And Ellie. Yeah. A co yes, and, and with Ellie, too, exactly. And now it's introducing a conflict with a really cool bad guy. And yeah. I, I, I can't get enough of this scene. I, it gives me chills every time I get here. It's I really, a, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, uh, his portrait is just kind of hard to figure out when you look at it from his side profile. Yeah. Like, until you mm. see him head on and you know art extraneous to the game, it's, it's hard to figure out what his deal is visually. 
Yeah, I kind of didn't recognize him in a cutscene later that's animated, one of the anime ones, um, that's within this playthrough. Um, I, I didn't immediately realize that that was uh, Graf, just for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it took there's a minute. A, there's a section of his armor, like, under his chin that's kind of mm. empty and, and black, and I always thought that black portion was like his, like hu he did a huge head and that was his mouth. But actually, it's just an empty portion of his armor that separates his chin from his neck. So, like, mm -hmm. once I find that frame of reference, oh. I can be like, okay, now I know it. Now I can understand what this guy looks like. So, but you looked at his mouth like it was the scream mask? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I, yeah, exactly. And I've, I've heard people say that, like, some of the little decor around his eyes makes it look like he's got, like, a booger hanging out of his nose or something. But, like, you just have to. <laughs> It's like a, it's like one of those, uh, you know, those magic eye pictures that they had in the '90s, where you had to kind of like focus your vision in order to actually oh, and right. like go cross-eyed to see it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but he's awesome. <laughs> I can like, never I'll, do this. I love this guy. Um, yeah, it's it's a really great scene uh, conceptually and in terms of the setups that are being dropped here, the new mysteries being unveiled, and I really like it for that reason. The music's really great. The 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 shot composition, right, is super awesome. But I really struggle with the dialogue. The dialogue is, is rough for me. Um, and, and in particular, there's the, I think, one of the most famous lines from the whole game. Yes. <laughs> I, I have some things to say about oh, that. Oh, the um, your father, my dad moment? My dad. Yeah, where he's my like, dad, is yeah. my father, you mean my dad? <laughs> Yeah, what do you so know about my father. I think that's like the spoony bard of this game. Like if this game were no, ever, the yeah. spoony bard. <laughs> if this totally game were ever to receive like a, a a retranslation or whatever, like the the, the new it localizers should keep that in there. They, no, they should keep it in there for for us, the real oh, ones. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say the Japanese isn't all that different. Um, yeah. But um, I do want to point out first, given the Final Fantasy VIII podcast that we did, mm. uh, you are no fan of the overuse of ellipses. Yes. And oh, there yeah. are tons of them <laughs> in yes. this, and everything yeah. Graf says. It's like four words and then dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's like, Kate, hey, we get it. It's dramatic. We get it. We get it. We get it. Yeah. Um, so the, um, the anime that plays before the music kicks in, uh, yeah, what are you guys' is, thoughts? This is, this is awesome. Like, yeah. uh, we talked about last time like how the game is super front-loaded with the anime scenes. Mm -hmm. And not only this one, but the next one in particular, I had almost completely forgotten existed at all. I was like so surprised when, especially when the next one came on, that I was like, wait a minute. I felt like I was seeing it from the, for the first time. Like yeah. I was like, I don't remember this at all. Mm -hmm. Was this but, his dream <clears throat> stuff? Uh, well, in this case, in this scene, huh. he asks, who are you? To graph, and then like his face kind of goes like bluish, almost like transparent. Oh yeah, that is yeah. the strangest. What did you and mean to that? Like it, it's the same complexion as the sky, with his eyes remaining. Yeah, I didn't know yes. What to make I of that. wondered if that was even done on purpose. It, it, it had to. Have it been. had to have been. It's it's a really like I feel an abstract way of just like a, like a like a stomach dropping moment. Like oh, I realize, I remember. Like, so, but it's it's like he's so you know, he's so like conflicted and confused. But, and he's sort of like, something is emerging inside of him, but he's like, has, he's trying to fight it because he's afraid of it. It's so it's, I feel like it's this almost artistic abstract, like hollowing out that, that almost you feel in your gut when like something strikes you. I don't know how to describe it, but I that's think kind the, of the way that I read that. I, I've I never think the, seen it done before. I, it, it has been done a lot in, uh, it reminds me of in the original Gundam Universal Century uh, episodes. Yep. Sorry to reference Gundam again. I will, I can't not reference Gundam. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, uh, the, the mech space suit things. I mean, they all yeah. go together. But um, but the, the, the there are characters in, in Gundam called new types, and they have these extra psychic abilities. And every time they have these kind of new type moments where they dip into like that, they, they feel things that are kind of that are happening in other places in the world, in other places in space, and they kind of tap into this kind of this spirit realm, kind of beyond. Uh, what what the normal person can perceive, and I read this moment as like Faye tapping into some sort of either his own subconscious or some sort of extraneous conscious out there, where he was able to say, "Oh, who are you? Wait, I know who you are." As soon as it turns blue, is when he recognize when he he feels that he knows who this is. Yeah. So okay, he's having this huh? like psychic moment, sort of. Yeah. So he's like, "Who are you?" And then it goes like, "Bam!" And he's like, "Oh, right. Like I know yeah. who you are. You killed her." And then he's like, her? Because he doesn't remember who the her is he's even referencing. He just remembers that he killed her. He's yeah. like, her? Wait a minute. No. And then it kind of and then it kind of gets a little bit, you know, again, kind of psychedelic or abstract, where he, he hear his voice saying, no, it wasn't me. 
not me, and then I, I'm a coward, and then it goes back to that little kid with the hair in his eyes from the cockpit in Lahan, mm-hmm. who looks like kind of wild. Well, and who we also saw him in a dream in the desert, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and he's, oh yeah, that's right. Um, uh, it, when 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 you're camping out with Ellie, there's like yeah, kind and of he's a like, dream "Don't leave me!" Like, and those weird, faceless people yeah. are kind of mm-hmm. walking in the distance. Yeah. So then he says that 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 kid with the wild hair and the and the kind of the smirk, it's it's almost like he's mocking. It was you. It was you. And then yeah. it kind of comes back to the scene again, where yeah. he he has the rest of the conversation with Graf there. Um, the the cross necklace was also swinging through part of that. It right. was, and the kid was covered in blood, right? He has, like, spots of blood yeah. on his face or something. And I so saying you killed her, it seems like he was in the... He was there when whoever she was was killed. Yeah. But the cross uh, necklace that that woman was wearing, it also looks... Behind him, it looks like he's in a desert. Yeah. And um, it almost looks like it's right after. Because the end of that previous dream, he was in the desert, and those those people were leaving, and he runs away, but this woman comes behind him and offers uh, him her hand. And then it almost seems like this uh, cutscene is right after that. Just, you know, the way that I could see it. It seems like the same kind of place, and then boom, she dies right in front of him. And he's like, what in the world happened? Um, now, I don't know if that's the case. But um, that cross necklace she has is uh, very interesting because it's cross. <laughs> yeah. And that represents religion just in general. And um, that almost that seems like he's like huge hypnotized. Here. Hip- but hypnotized by a cross is a deeper, it says something deeper than um, than like a stopwatch or something, right? The thing that's doing the hypnotizing is is the religion itself. It's the, the religious symbol. That I, I, I may be reading too much into that, but it seems as though the, the religion is has hypnotized him and has got him in this like weird kind of state where he kind of becomes a different person. It's, it's interesting. I am... I'm just smiling because I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> for when, I can't wait uh, to see what you have to say about this in three weeks. For when these things are revealed and, and it yeah. all comes together for you, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's going to be awesome. I, I like where your mind is at, and I like, I just, I'm, I'm glad that you're paying attention to these things because this symbol is huge. It's so the important cross. to like phase whole psychology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. One thing I didn't really notice important. originally about this scene, uh, and it's something to pay attention to, but the word coward is used here, and I think that's important. Yeah, to, to, I'm a coward again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. Because he yeah, last used it when he was responsible. So that might actually be an interesting thing where he might be blaming himself for this girl's death as well, yeah. right? Because he blamed, that's the last time he used the word coward. Yeah, so I want to pull up some of the actual dialogue here. Let me look at this kind of line by line. So Saitan is sort of like off to the side, <clears throat> it, watching this conversation happening and not doing much to interfere, which I thought was interesting, right? So uh, yeah. uh, Faye is talking that. to Graf and, and it, they'll cut to Saitan who's just kind of standing there watching this. And he has a line where he says, here we go again, right? <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh boy, it's <laughs> I happening did not again. That line at all, but uh, yeah, that's hilarious. Huh. Yeah. So he's allowing this to happen, though. He's not trying to like, you know, in in Lahan, he was trying at least to be like, "Hey, no, stop." Yes. Yes. But here, he's just letting him talk to Graf. There was collateral damage in uh, hmm. Lahan. I also think Saiten has a has a level of curiosity too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Satan. Yeah. Himself. Well, because he's a scientist, right? He tinkers with things and. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so uh, here we go again, and then uh, we have Graf here. My name is Graf, the seeker of power. You certainly showed how much power you had back there in Lahan, didn't you, Faye? Faye says, how much power I had, Aizuchi. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? And then Graf says, a great power is what I need to fulfill my mission. I sent those gears into that land as a catalyst to awaken the power in you to make contact with you. So this is where we, it's confirmed that they fought in Lahan on purpose. Graf wanted the Veltal to fall in Lahan and for them to fight there because he wanted Fey to be awakened in huh. some way, right? So, so Graf, Graf is, kind of orchestrated it. Yes, on okay. purpose. Right, I kind of, yeah, figured that here. So Fey says, as a catalyst, Aizuchi, you mean you caused that intentionally? No, you're reading it wrong, you're reading it wrong. <laughs> as a catalyst. 
You mean you caused that intentionally? <laughs> See, the first, the way I read it sounds less like an actual question. <laughs> oh, sure. But, yeah. but they put a question mark on it because you have to in English because otherwise... Instead it, of like almost work using on it like as a catalyst. As a catalyst. Okay. Yeah, so he's, he, I, what, a part of Aizuchi is, like 50% of Aizuchi is you talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. Technically, but you're thinking out loud. Kind sure. Of. Yeah. And then Graf says, that's right, the death of your loved ones and you powerless against it happening. The grief, the screams from your heart born out of the tragedy. There, that was the catalyst for triggering your power. So grief and tragedy are going to be huge themes throughout this in terms of them linking to the psychology of the characters. Mm. That, uh, and, and this is, I'm, I'm just going to drop this name now so that people can, if they want to go out and read a little bit more, will um, uh, get, I guess, uh, some context for some of like the, the psychology that the game's gonna be examining. But in particular, Karen Horney, who was like a neo-Freudian psychoanalyst, mm -hmm. uh, she has a, a, you know, she had a sort of a theory of neurosis. Yeah, so her, her theory of neurosis um, is gonna take a, a really big, it's gonna be a really big part of, um, kind of the psychology of Faye. Um, but it, it, like, super terrible tragedy, like traumatic grief and loss that uh, is what Graf is referring to here, right, as being like the catalyst to awakening the power in Faye uh, that he needs to fulfill his purpose, that Graf needs. Um, so, if you don't want the game spoiled, you're playing for the first time, maybe don't look into that just yet. But if you're playing for a second time and you want some extra like context on Faye, that will help you understand part of what he's talking about here. So then Faye says, you mean you attacked my village just to get me into that gear? Why? Why did the villagers have to die? And Graf says, who cares why? It doesn't matter how many of them died. They were wretched vermin only living from day to day without ever fulfilling their prescribed destinies. Um, th this has, uh, this line I think has like a pretty significant bearing on some stuff we'll get into later too. Just put pins in these things, just remember them for later, right? It also shares Ellie's disdain for the people on the surface. Yes. Hmm. And have you forgotten? You were the one who destroyed the village. I did not lift a finger. And Faye says, no, I was just trying to save the village and its people. I never intended to destroy it. And Graf says, is that so? Surely you've heard it. Uh, it is the essence, or the very essence of you, the voice of desire from within you that craves destruction. Faye says, shut up, even if that were true, weren't you the one who caused it? If you hadn't come to the village, who, uh, they wouldn't have suffered the way that they did. And Graf says, ah, so now you resort to blame. So this is kind of the second time this has happened where Faye has tried to deflect blame away from himself and people have called him out and told him to take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. I see, that sounds like something you would say, you in quotes. Uh, that's good, your basic nature remains unchanged. And Faye says, crap, uh, you said my need for power, what are you intending to do with it? And here's the really key line. Graf says, you know very well, it is to destroy Mother God. Now, when you had, when I was going through the things that you had recorded for our, for the other episode, um, yes. you had talked about being confused about the 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 purple haired woman who yes. emerges and her Very relationship so. to God and whether she is God or not. And or, that is what I thought of right when I read this. Yes, he says specifically Mother God here, yeah. which I thought was interesting. And I have the Japanese as well for that. Kay. It is the same. It is the same word. It mm. is uh, haha narukami, which means Mother God. It is not. Mother of God, yeah, it is Mother God. Yep. So to destroy Mother God, and Faye says, destroy God. Graf says, yes, you, we will destroy God. That is our purpose. That is our destiny. Faye, don't be ridiculous. I won't get involved in such a thing. If you want to destroy God or whatever it is you're on about, do it by yourself. By the way, I saw your guys' post on Twitter yeah. the other day using that as a meme. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Graf says, ha ha ha. You resemble your father. And then Faye's line, my father? You mean my dad? <laughs> you know <Yes>. my father? <laughs> yes. Oh, so my I father, the Spoonie Bard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I agree with you guys. This is a line 
where if this were game were to be remained, they they or, or to be remade, they should not change it. Like right, yeah, it also has to a, stay. Yeah, this and the tinkering with his junk in the backyard should stay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was great. That was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, they better keep that one too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, in Japanese, right there, um, that line reads, "Chichi uh, oya oyaji." And that is not as weird in Japanese as English. However, it is saying the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, which is like parent, you know, dad parent. So it's like father. And then oyaji, which is, I, I guess, a more um, normal way to refer to your father. So like dad. So yeah. it's father, you mean dad. And then omae oyaji o shiteiru no ka is you, my dad. You you know my dad. I mean, it's it's the same. It's basically the exact same in Japanese. The only difference is it should say father, dad. You know my dad. That's what it should say. Oh, so it's almost like he's saying it to himself, like oh dad. Like I, and this you know is what I'm dad. telling you. Half of Aizuchi is you talking to yourself. At uh, least half of it. You're letting the person know you're you're following along, but at the same time you're inflecting about it. Uh, often uh, people will use informal speech. For Aizuchi, I mean, you shouldn't if you're talking to someone really important, I suppose. But when you're talking to yourself, you will use less formal dialogue. Now, with a conversation like this, he's just being informal the whole time. So I can't use that to read into it enough because he's like, you jerk, shut up, stop talking, go away, do kill God yourself. So he's not being polite when he says these things. Uh, so I can't tell that, oh, he's just being impolite because he's talking to himself. But that is often how it works. He, it would be inflect, inflexive. So what it should say, my opinion, if I were to translate this, it would be, my father dot 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 to himself. I don't see. You can't. You can't. <laughs> you. I, I don't even know how to read. Because it. it was up to um, How do you do it? Uh, the, the final oh, fantasy techniques the, of changing what the is color like of in the your font. brain or yes. what, what you're thinking so versus gray what text. you're saying out loud. My father, comma, and then he, a whole maybe new like he knows. Block of text. He knows dad. Yeah. And then he says out loud, you know my father? You know right? my father? That would be what they're definitely trying to go for. Dialogue but, box um, technology hadn't advanced to that point yet. <laughs> yes. How do you write that? How do you write that? I don't know. Yeah. I see what you mean, though. Yeah. It makes sense. And then Graf, in response to that, says, that was the most delightful scream. I was enthralled by it. Nothing is more beautiful than a scream of death. Inferring he killed his dad, I guess. Yeah. It would be what he is, I would sing. He's trying to incite Faye, right? He's trying to, like piss him off. And then he says, what did you do to my father? What happened between you two? Hmm, do you really wish to know? There's no use in knowing it now. And he's like, what? And then Graf says, your power is still beneath that needed for my purposes. Anything unusable must be tried until it becomes suitable. And this is where the sandworm comes out of the ground and he's like, basically, right. if you die now, whatever, but I need you to be more powerful, so like I'm gonna keep testing you. Well, it seems like Graf is a firm believer in destiny, right? Yeah. So. If you die, well, I guess you weren't the destined one, I suppose. Like, we'll find somebody else. That's maybe what I would take out of something like that. Otherwise, it's like, he shouldn't be trying to kill to kill him so hard to specifically kill him. Unless yeah. he's, like, for sure, like, this dude's invincible or something yeah. like that. He does send out a sandworm that pretty much only thing it does is suck the fuel of the gear. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. really try to kill you. Oh, uh, okay. It doesn't, it's invulnerable. like, it does attack sometimes, but, like, pr I would say f half or more of its moves were just... Basically taking your fuel, yeah. which it was kind of strange, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get, the, the, this is sort of a tutorial to teach you how to use the ether machine where you can use right. your abilities. The Kamehameha blast. Yes, <laughs> and it, <laughs> yes. Uh, and the weird thing is, is like you don't really use those too much throughout the game unless you spec specifically for them, so, um, but it works out. This scene specifically, I also think it's possible to maybe wonder if Sidon and Grav both want the same thing from Faye. And Sidon's silence is maybe an observation point to see if Grav's methods are effective. Mm. I think that's, not allowed I think to you're treat right. Him. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. yeah, I think you're right about that. And um, yeah, the, the other note about the sandworm too is um, physical attacks are, it's very resistant to physical attacks. So just another way that it's kind of pushing you, I think so you're right to say, tutorializing yeah. you to use the, you know, the, the ether instead. Just to show you, hey, you don't just do karate in this thing, you can also <laughs> yeah. use magic too, right? You also um, get an eyeball as a reward for that and keep a lookout because there's only one vendor in the game that gives you top dollar for that stuff. Mm, right. 
Um, okay, so that kind of ends that scene, and then uh, after that, uh, they get captured by the Ave uh, gears that are nearby, right? And they like take the gear away onto their little, I don't know, their little vehicle thing that's like taking it back to. I don't I know if it's taking it was, like a dazzle or somewhere else. I thought it was interesting that when Faye got out of the cockpit, Saiten was trying to tell Faye to, to remain calm and, and he didn't want Faye to lose it right here uh. but I think he kind of stopped halfway because Faye was because all Faye did was respond with with three dots he just sat he there so, yeah he was already he's like I'm already done like I, I think Faye has been he's he's reached an inflection point that's not rage and anger it's more along the lines of like who am I and what is going on yeah mm. and that, that, that yeah he, he talks about that in the next scene actually He's been through the ringer emotionally at this point, and he just yeah. does not know what to make of it. He's got no anger left. Yeah. Hmm. And so you get captured, and you're aboard uh, that vessel as it's taking you back as a prisoner. More and anime. this is where you get some really good dialogue between Faye and Saitan, where you can. it kind of leaves it up to you, though, as the player. You can choose to keep talking to him to get, like, extra pieces of stuff or extra pieces of context or... Um, you can just kind of go to sleep or whatever. But I was mm. shocked. This is where he doesn't answer your questions. You'll ask him yeah. about himself, and he's like, doesn't want to talk about it. kind of hiding things from him, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But I was shocked because I did not remember this scene happening so early, where it goes into that, like, spacey, psychedelic... The time of the gospel, right? And, and he's talking to... Do they reveal who he is? It in says the, scene? the emperor. So yeah. it's emperor. It's the emperor. Okay. Yeah, so he's speaking the to emperor. the emperor. But they don't. Did they give his name in the scene? I can't. Not yet. that I saw. Okay. No, I haven't so, heard his name for a while. Won't mention his name yet. Um, but he's talking to the emperor in some crazy yeah. place <laughs> with all these paintings. I tried to see if any of them were the painting that um, that Faye did at the beginning of the game. And I think it is I implied that it, those are tell. Faye's paintings. Yeah. Yeah. Just because he's a painter, and there's yeah, they're kind of all abstract <laughs> and impossible to tell. But I think I don't. That's know where, true because Faye was doing like, some pretty abstract yeah. stuff. It might be apocrypha, but I, I think that's intended to be Faye's paintings. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So we'll just say Faye's paintings are flying around <laughs> in space, <laughs> and the emperor is sitting in a throne like that's floating there, and Saitan is there talking to him, and it's just again maybe this is just me on a second playthrough having knowing where the story's going, being like. This is very heavy-handed foreshadowing, but maybe it's vague enough to where like people on a first playthrough aren't going to read that much into it or would just be so confused by and overwhelmed by the number of things happening to where you just kind of forget it. Because again, I forgot that this happened this early. I forgot about especially the, the next anime cutscene we see. I was like, this happens now? Like, wow, this game is so front-loaded with huge, setups and foreshadowing that like I almost felt like the game is spoiling itself but obviously it doesn't since <laughs> I didn't pick up on it my first playthrough and I assume most people are the same way most people are pretty confused by the time they get to the end of this game right until they start researching it more and looking into it but they mentioned specifically the time of the gospel yes. in this um, in this cutscene and uh, er, Saitan, in the conversation with Faye as he's listening to him, is wondering about, you know, is it, is it now? Is the time of the gospel happening now? Like, is this kind of the end, mm -hmm. you know? But I don't want to comment too much on what the time of the gospel is quite yet, other than to say the emperor mentioned specifically it's relating to the resurrection of God. That, uh, you know, right. the time of the gospel is going to be the time where they, they locate God and they resurrect God and bring him back. Well, so the time of the gospel, it occurs, it's almost, it feels to me like a, a window. The word they use for time in Japanese is like an era. And yeah. um, gospel, surprisingly, is, is the exact same word. It, it even, it's like a direct from the Greek. It, it mm. means, the kanji mean uh, like fortunate um, sound or noise. And the word gospel in Greek means good news, right? Oh, sure. And in Japanese, it's like fortune sound. You know, it's basically saying the same thing as the Greek, not so much the English. Um, although, I guess, because they do have the katakana, gosuperu, but they used kanji for this one, which makes it, it's, it's different. It's a little bit different. Now, these words have been in Japan for like 500 years, so sure. I, that's probably why they were just written in the kanji here. Um, but... Um, 
one thing I did, okay, so I had a, I had a few takeaways here, but the time of the gospel, he says, we have to do it before a certain time. It, it's not like this is yes. definitely going to happen. It's like the time of the gospel is here. If it shows up and God isn't resurrected, then that's bad. Yes. So it's not so much like, like what I got from it is it's not so much God is going to be resurrected. It's like we have to do it. Yes. We have to make the resurrection happen because yes. the time of the gospel, so the time of the gospel and the resurrection are not connected in, from what I can tell. The God, time of the gospel is going to happen no matter what. It's the resurrection that needs, that needs to be made to happen. Yes. It, it will not. Anyways, I think I've made it. It's so much there. fun to watch you sort through this. Dude, and I don't even know what it freaking means, okay? <laughs> All right, Mother God, done. and apparently, so she died somehow, and they got to bring her back, and okay, and that's fine, but like the time of the gospel is the weirdest sentence or <laughs> phrase I, think a, I guess i think an alternate version of this podcast that you guys are doing would just be like Kason in a room by himself just trying to <laughs> solve this out with no one to and just like i, I got my notes and yeah, yeah i would yeah. watch that for sure something that's important this is our first time hearing the musical track the one who is torn apart and you may not uh, notice it but there's a percussive instrument of it sounds like a clock's pendulum going back and forth but uh, slowed down oh, pitched down. oh really and that's not part of the, the that's song, not part right? of the song yeah, yeah. yeah that's overlapped on the song i did i remember oh, when okay. you pointed that to me pointed that out to me originally and um, I noticed it this time because the song starts before the scene cuts to the throne this the, the throne room conversation but the the ticking doesn't start until it gets in, get, gets right there it was a really nice real mm. subtle but really really nice touch also uh, what are is this like an astral projection is this is Sidon reflecting back on this or yeah was did he doing this while Faye's asleep like I don't, I don't know, know if, if we ever re- saw yeah that I don't trouble. know if it's ever resolved really <laughs> I don't know yeah it just seems like they're on, they're in the infinity of outer space. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. It almost seems like a dream, like they're like talking telepathically or something. But it also seems like it's a past moment that yeah, like Satan's remembering, remembering this. because he's like, the t- could it be? So and then it's okay. It's the time. That's when he learned about the time of the gospel. Yeah. I think something uh, that really it, it's so weird. Something that really stuck with me when I first played this game uh, was that. We're using like there's a lot of uh, like kind of like Garden of Eden imagery in the, in this conversation. He's talking oh, yeah. about how uh, the the line is the the emperor says we we the gazelle must find God's resting place and then resurrect him. That is our final prayer. Uh, our final prayer is to escape the fate that was determined at our Genesis. So you see the term like Genesis. Uh, you, you hear some stuff yes. about like being forced out of uh, at, uh, or being forced onto the cruel surface of the earth and all of this like biblical imagery. Well, he talks about paradise. Yeah, paradise, exactly. Yeah, paradise is a Persian word. It means garden. That's what the word paradise means. And that's actually true in the Japanese as well. The word for paradise in Japanese is rakuen, which means like a comfort garden, like a comfortable garden. That's, wow. That is what the word paradise means. That's the word they used here. Mm. So it's reference, direct reference to garden. But all this contrasts with like what this guy actually looks like. Because he looks like he's the devil or something. Because he's got this. <laughs> ugly, oh, he looks like, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Is that his face, or is he? Is it he's, a helmet? It's, like, it's a helmet. Sure. It's a helmet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's he doesn't actually look. Cannot like he's, elaborate he's this time. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Okay. I also I have some more things. Are you? Go ahead. Okay. Because um, this part right here, the off, the emperor refers to himself and those with him as gazelles. I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of the gazelle versus the lamb because they've 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 mentioned both, and oh. both of them in ancient Israel were used as sacrifices. were were clean, considered clean. They were allowed to be used as sacrifices. However, lambs were domesticated, and 90% of all sacrifices was a lamb because that's what they had, and that's there you go. Whereas a gazelle was not domesticated. It was wild. It would run around. Mm. You you would be pretty rare to actually catch a gazelle. So the gazelle are the free ro- roaming. The clean animals that are free and kind of out of the grasp of the sacrifices, and then the lambs are just the 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 sheeple, you know, the ones who get led to the slaughter, and the gazelle get to be free. Anyways. Yeah, I don't I, know if there's anything to that. But. I have never thought of it that way. That's really interesting that you bring it up. I never because th- I don't I never pronounced it as gazelle. I I, I always pronounce it as gazelle or, 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 or gazelle, gazelle or something. I think we said oh, gazelle. Oh, I yeah. assumed gazelle. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, so I never I read thought it about the animal when I looked at that <laughs> oh, word. Oh, that's all I could think of. Yeah, so huh. is that, that's how it's spelled? Is it? Is it correct? That's just that's what, what I That's what I, I got to check that right now because... And the only reason I even thought that is because they mentioned lambs before. And the so only difference I can think of is lamb usually has M dashes on the side, whereas gazelle is presented just as a pronoun. Oh, was it? 
Or at, okay, least, okay. at the very least, capitalized. Oh, yeah, so it is spelled underneath. differently. Gazelle is spelled... Dang it, it's E-L-L-E. L -L -E. -L -E. yeah. So we yeah. the Gazel, so it's just a made-up word, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's not uh, referencing the animal. I do think then, you can run with that, though. That's a, that's a pretty good... But but that's that's why, as you were saying it, I was sitting there going, like, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second. I'm just saying, wait a second. in a game that references the Bible, there just happens to be an animal that almost sounds like Gazel. <laughs> That is that is something to chew on a little bit. I would have to think about that a little bit more. That is interesting. There were times where the the ancient like Bedouins and the wanderers of of the uh, Arabia they would build these huge walls and they would kind of like put it at a ninety degree angle to basically trap gazelle and then they'd come in and corner them and the gazelle mm. couldn't jump the wall and they'd just like slaughter like a hundred of <laughs> Holy them crap. and then they'd feast for like you know a few weeks and then they you know they wouldn't see another gazelle for the next year. Mm. Interesting that. Uh, Gazelle were trapped within a wall for what happens. Later well, that and that's game. how they hunted him. Sure. I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, never, okay. I would have never made that connection because it's not the spelling, and so I didn't see the animal yeah. in my brain when I saw that word. Interesting. But now that you mention it, there <laughs> actually might be something there, even if it's inadvertent <clears throat> or not purposeful or not intended. That that could be like a valid reading that you can I have easily to get think about. Seven hundred words on that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and then I've got yeah. Paradise refers to the Garden of Eden. Um, it's a Persian word. It's specific. As long as we can, I don't need to go into all that. As long as we accept that paradise is typically referring to the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Uh, but I have further evidences if we need to talk about them. Yeah. And so after that conversation with Saitan, you have the anime cutscene I was referring to that I okay, totally well, hold forgot on. existed. Because we're, if we're going to leave it, then I have one more thing. Okay. <laughs> I have one more thing to say. Okay, go. And this is, um, there's a Japanese, a translation difference here, a, a pretty big difference. Okay. Um, so towards the end, Graf said, I'm sorry, the Emperor says, um, this, that is our final prayer here. Um, but that is not what he actually says. Um, what he actually says in the Japanese is, if this doesn't come true. This is why I mm. was trying to elaborate specifically on how the time of the gospel and the, the resurrection of the God are technically, are technically separate events um, that aren't connected. Because in the English, he's saying, we have to get the God and resurrect him. This is our final prayer. And then Satan says, this is our final prayer here. And then he's like, yes, you know, and then they kind of go away. He doesn't say anything about a prayer in Japanese. He says, um, if this doesn't come true, dot, dot, dot. And then Satan goes, if this doesn't come true, question mark, then what? Mm -hmm. It's a Aizuchi thing, but still. And then he says, then we are destined. We were destined from to the, to a fate from the beginning. There, there's no mention of a of a prayer of them having a prayer. They're just talking about the fate that was determined at the beginning. The okay. fate at the, the fate that was determined at our Genesis feels like the a specific reference to like the fall of man, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. I believe so. Especially given the references to the Garden of yeah. Eden and such. So the yeah the fall and state of man and a subservience to. So it feels like whatever. he's trying to undo whatever happened at that point in time. Yes, sense. exactly. Now, because I had to look that up just now. Um, so instead of saying our final prayer is to escape from that fate, he would say, if this doesn't come true, then we are then, bound, then to, we're the bound fate to the fate that was determined that was determined in our Genesis. Yeah. Does that is that important? Well, it, it is. It is interesting that the Japanese version replaces the final prayer you're talking about with, if this doesn't happen, if we do not resurrect God, then we are bound to the fate determined at our Genesis. Right? So a prayer does still come into so it, right? It, it clarifies that, it clarifies what you're saying, that they have to do the resurrecting. And if they don't do it, then, then something really bad is going to happen. Yes. And I, that's clearer in the Japanese than It's clearer than it is in, in the, the Japanese English. than in the English, absolutely. Yeah. The English is like they're giving their prayer to whatever they're going to do for God. Yeah. But with the Japanese, it's like this may not happen. They're not just, they're not praying to a deity that is a thing that's definitely going to come to pass. They're, they're deciding that they have to make something happen. Yeah. So it's like we have to take action. Otherwise, we're going to be bound to this fate. We don't want whatever that is. So we have to resurrect God. Exactly. And there is a possibility it might not happen. Yes. Right? Okay. Got it. And with Faye as a main oh, character, you can see why people are trying to accelerate that process if there's a time window. Right. If they, if they have a, there's a ticking time bomb element to the right. story. And these people are trying to get Faye to do something. 
So they're to trying awaken. to push him to because they have a time limit. So there's a purpose. Got See. it. Okay. So I had totally forgotten, <laughs> completely forgotten about this anime cutscene mm -hmm. where Graf faces off against. Is it a well, spoiler fight? No, because I guessed it. If I know it, it's not a spoiler. Because that's his I, dad. I think right? it's pretty clear. That's his dad. <laughs> I mean, they don't state it outright, but he's thinking about his father. Well, and that was he talked to he talked to Graf, who said that he had he alluded to like the scream of his father or whatever. So I yeah. think it's pretty clear that that's his dad, right? The clothing tips it off. The clothing and the hairstyle. And the yeah. Fact that yes, absolutely. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Well, and he even mentions he says, "I will die before I let you touch him." It's like, hey, this is a yeah. father protecting his kid. Like that's that's yeah. What's okay, so yeah, it's, it's so pretty clear. I think it's pretty obvious, but yeah, I I, I just tell. wanted to make sure that I'm not spoiling something too <laughs> early or something like that. The first line spoken in this anime is interesting. This is I, I it's hard to tell to know who this is, but it, it is Groff speaking. He says, "Let us join together," is what he's saying to yes his dad guy. Yes. So he's he's basically trying to join together with Faye's dad. And Faye's dad is facing off against him. And and also, again, put a pin in this for later, there's that red-haired warrior guy. Yeah, I don't know what's and, that. And f f you'll notice that Faye's father looks over to him, and then he shows the red-headed dude. And yes. then he turns back to Graf, and he says, I won't let you have him. Right? So... He's the, something's going on here with Graf and the red-haired warrior dude and Faye's dad, and Faye kind is remembering this, right? Almost as if Faye was there, right? Interesting. So something to put a pin in, and just to remember for later, another heavy piece of foreshadowing. Again, on the second playthrough, it feels like this stuff is very obvious, <laughs> but. Obviously, it wasn't because I didn't pick up on it the first time, right? Um, Two other things there. Uh, sure. Groff and the mysterious guy on the right are both glowing in red, whereas the man in the middle is glowing in blue. And I'm not mm. sure what to read into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then when, that's uh, right. he's, when he says, I will never let you have him, the mystery man on the right grins. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So ominous. Very ominous. Okay, and so then we awaken on the ship, and this is where uh, we get introduced to Bart, um, the leader of the Sand Pirates, and they oh, see yeah. the kind of cruiser that uh, Faye and Saitana are imprisoned on. They go attack it, um, and this what starts to sink. And I, I kind of liked that sequence, uh, kind of like high um, intensity sequence. You got to get out. You got to get out rising. while the sand's rising, and there is a possibility of getting a game over if you're too slow. Yeah. Um, Anyways, you're, you're running out of this ship, uh, you escape it, you get back onto, uh, back onto Veltal again. Um, and there's and then, much less hesitancy this time. Yeah. Faye, he, you climb, climb up the crane, you climb down, and he even says, well, it looks like we're destined to be together. He's talking yeah. to mm -hmm, the yeah. gear, and he just drops on in, and it's like he's accepting his fate. Yep. And then he faces off against Bart in Bart's gear. And they're fighting back and forth, kind of like a little bit of a rivalry building up between these characters. Then they sink in the quicksand down below into the stalactite cavern. Um, but before we really go back to them, again, some more Saitan stuff that I just did not remember being this heavy-handed so early <laughs> on. <laughs> um, Sigurd is talking to Saitan, and he, he, he calls him by a different name. Huga, yes. Hugh, uh, I, Hugh and then Huga. I noticed that. So it's like, this dude has been around. He knows Sigurd. He knows all these people. He has different names. Mm -hmm. I, maybe again, another Gandalf parallel there. Gandalf goes right. by Mithrandir different names and, in yeah, different exactly. places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's been around, and he like he really is involved in something, and he's guiding Faye towards a destiny, yes. right? And uh, and and he does the same thing you were talking about there, where Sigurd will like try to ask him, but he like kind of just avoids answering he does anything. Not tell anybody, and he kind of just like changes topics yes. or he and deflects. I, I could see Gandalf doing the same thing because there's he knows so much. Gandalf, ha like, is one of the gods, technically, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's like you could ask him all sorts of things, the meaning of life and whatnot, and he's like he knows this stuff, but he's yeah. not. He doesn't. Gandalf would never actually tell anybody. Yeah. So it fits. I think it works for this character for Satan. Yeah. So, anyways, you're down in the cave and uh, Bart. Oh, before. So when when um, Sigurd is talking to um, to Huga, this is yep. apparently um, Satan. 
Um, there is a funny... Okay, so first of all, there are two pirates with eye patches. I just think that's great. There's the, <laughs> the main guy and then the other person, and they both have eye patches. It is just so perfect. Um, but there's the doctor who's up there, who as yes. soon as everybody gets oh, up top, funny. it was very <laughs> funny. So funny, I had to look it up in Japanese as well. Um, the doctor's like, hey, so is anybody almost dead, have severed limbs, or need as an abdominal surgery? Anybody? We oh man, and what does he say he, in he's English? He's like, oh, that's disappointing. He says, oh. Yeah, that's yeah. depressing. Depressing. He says, that's depressing. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I could not believe, though, that he says that in Japanese. The, uh, does, the okay, Yggdrasil well. nurse is, is who we referred to her, but we, we eventually would refer to her as the woman who is obsessed with viscera because you can visit her throughout the game and she uh -huh. will have new, creepy, weird things to say to you. So be oh sure to, uh, to check in, into the doctor's office whenever you can. Whenever, whenever, after. After almost every like pivotal cutscene or, or, or big big moment in the game, just go back to the Yggdrasil and talk to everybody, but never miss the the uh, the nurse because she's always got something funny to say. Well, I, I, took, I took a note on this too because she'll she'll take your weight, right? Yeah. yeah and er, when we talked last time, I talked about how if you take the the bird egg to Yui and she cooks it in the meal, Faye gains like twenty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like crazy, but when you get, so when you go into her like little room and she weighs you, she says Faye is the perfect weight. But I don't remember if you go in there without having eaten the bird egg, if maybe she'll say he's underweight or say something different. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have mm -hmm. no memory of, of what she says otherwise. I'd have to like restart a file and purposefully not eat the bird egg and go in, which I'm not gonna do. The unfortunate but. thing about this game is that save points aren't as common as I would like. Um, they're more spread out. They're pretty spread out, and so it would, it, depending on... They're pretty close together It might in be some difficult places. for you to just go do one and reload. Like, uh, inside the Yggdrasil, and there's a couple of other places I where I thought, I suppose if like, it's like a hub. They're like right place. next to each other, mm. but... Okay, um, but... Were you gonna say something? The doctor who asks that question in the Japanese, instead of saying, wow, that's depressing, um, in the Japanese, uh, she merely says, how dull, there isn't? <sighs> Boring, oh, and that's really? it. And she says, mm. oh, tsumanai, tsumanai, which is just like, so boring, right? So it's not so much depressing as much as it is, as it is just absolutely no, I, boring for I her. have nothing to do, this yes. sucks. Yeah. yeah, that makes a little more sense. That's funny. During Sidon and Sigurd's conversation, Sidon also says their meeting is not a coincidence. It's an, it's an, an, it is an inevitable consequence. I did find that curious because I don't think that, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, Sidon and Sigurd meeting here is, is necessarily important to the, the time of the gospel or these other things that are going on. So uh, that's, that's just the way he talks, I guess. Okay, so down in the cave, in the cavern, uh, Bart and Faye kind of make a truce not to fight each other. Um, I, I thought it was funny that he was like trying to convince him while they were fighting. I am not an Ave soldier. Like, stop yeah. attacking me. And then <laughs> he just doesn't believe. He's you. like, he sees him. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, you're not an Ave soldier. He's like, I, yeah, I was freaking telling you that. He's like, well, come on, what do you expect? <laughs> Bart had yelled at him for ditching his crewmen on the sinking ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He's like, like, you're like, abandoning. You know what's funny? How he calls, does he call him a coward there? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, close to it, if not. Something similar. It's yeah. it's funny how ethical these pirates are. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't kill could. anyone. They're very calculated. They rescue <laughs> the people as they're looting the ship. And yeah, he's like, you can't abandon your people. Like, he's trying to enforce his ethical moral code <laughs> as a freaking pirate on this, like, other soldier from a different land. Yeah. It's so funny. You'll see why that is uh, a little bit later. But, okay. Um, I do think it's, I think it's pretty neat how... Bart and uh, and Faye at, at, at this first meeting, at this first traversal through the uh, stalactite cave, they're already beginning to like kind of bicker like a married couple. Like they're yeah. already it's kind funny. of developing that kind of <laughs> yes. the the kind of bromance relationship that, that they developed throughout this sure, game. Sure, sure. And okay. it's already starting right right at that 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 to uh, yeah right at this point. Yeah, I really like yeah. it. It's good banter. Um, it's fun because every time they're like, "Oh yeah, you want a piece of me?" and they're like, "Yeah," and then it's like, "Yeah," but. Let's wait until we get out of <laughs> yeah. the cave, and then they get out of the cave, and he's like, "Hey, but let's wait until we get to the next place. We're not, we're not just fight right here, you know." Yeah. So they're funny. right next to like the capital of Ave. Yes, he's like yes. they're just gonna come grab us if we fight here. Let's just yeah. Wait. Bart's <laughs> definitely the the it's prototypical funny. kind of like you know himbo kind of guy. Who, he's yeah. he'll develop into that guy, the em empty-headed brute. Yeah, yeah. But what was really interesting to me 
was as they're moving through here, they come to the shelter where this old man Balthazar lives. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wonder if the fact that his name is Balthazar was some kind of like remnant of when this game was a Chrono Trigger sequel. Um, oh. Because Balthazar is one of the three wise men in like Chrono Trigger, right? Who sure. like have been if around not... since the time of antiquity and sort of like understand the world and like all the mysteries going on. If I'm not mm. mistaken, the, the the sages in Chrono Trigger were not named after the biblical magi in the Japanese version. No, they weren't. That right. that was yeah. changed into that. That's actually a good point. So well, maybe in, in the Japanese, his name is Baru. They do call him, um, although whether it's Balthazar, because they call him Old one. Man Bal once he like, yeah, like he that's his title. Ba yeah, he introduces himself as Balthazar, and there are several right. other characters in this game named ba with that with that surname and the other the other Magi are in this game as well, so I, I, I assume that's a specific reference to the Biblical Magi. Yeah. But anyways, I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. Because um, this game was at one time a sequel to Chrono Trigger, mm -hmm. and I yep. wonder if that was, you know, part of that at that time or whatever. Um, but, so I copied down the conversation that they have, and this is... It's a good one. Really good stuff. <laughs> really good stuff. So he's like... Oh, you know, what do you do down here? And he's like, uh, uh, you know, he's, he has an interest in archaeology. So he takes them back to look at some skulls. Um, and uh, he's kind of showing them off. And he, Balthazar says, notice anything particular about these shells? By the way, his name is Balthazar in Japanese. In Japanese as well. In, in okay. Xenogears. Um, they go from oldest on the left to newest on the right. And then Bart says, are you an archaeologist or something, old man? I don't quite see what you're talking about. They just look like a bunch of old bones to me. Faye, what do you think? And Faye steps up and says, let me see. Um, first, there are no human bones up to here. And this is what makes me confused about how you're supposed to read Faye with the yeah. Aizuchi thing I've been talking about. Because he comes across as, comes across as really dumb a lot of the times. But mm -hmm. this is a very interesting kind of like intelligent thing that he does here in intuiting this yeah. mystery, right? It's yeah. like, is that like a fault of the writer of just like, oh, in this conversation we need to reveal this and so the character needs to say this? Or is this, you know, Faye's smarter than, than we think he is, right? It, it's kind of hard for me to get a read on him. But he says, let me see. First, there are no human bones up to here. Then from here on over to the right, something is slightly different, I guess. And then Balthazar says, yes, from a certain point in time, human fossils suddenly no longer appear. That point is roughly 10,000 years ago. And Bart says, what does that mean? And Balthazar says, don't ask me. I don't know for sure, but my guess is there were no humans on this planet before then. At least it appears so. A Bart's line here is my favorite. <laughs> and then Bart says, but how could that be? What about all the talk about evolution? What about all the talk about evolution? <laughs> I just love it. I've been hearing about that stuff. Yeah, and all then that talk. Balthazar says, you mean the theory of evolution as taught by the ethos, right? You can't trust that. Rather, I believe in the old legends and myths. So this is kind of weird to me um, for a yeah. couple of reasons. So first of all, it's this is, I think, a clear indication that that crash we saw in the beginning of the game, right? The, the ship crash happened 10,000 years ago. In the past. There were no humans on this planet before this point. So it gives us like a nice timeline of how far removed we are from the prologue because hmm. who knows how long ago that was or how recent that was or whatever. But now we have like a pretty specific timetable here for when humans appeared on this planet. Um, but I think it's weird and I don't know what you guys think. I think it's weird that the ethos teaches the theory of evolution. And now the ethos is, is the the churchly people. Yes, right? that is in the, the in the in the Japanese right. version. It's just referred to as the church. The church. Like so ethos, they call it ethos isn't even here. a word. They just refer to them as the church. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. So the church. The church is, is teaching, teaching evolution. Evolution. But. But I'm confused as to why. <laughs> I think it's important well, that the huh. the lambs the the, the surface dwellers that. don't understand that or that that they don't know that humans were absent prior to 10,000 years ago. Like, they want to cover up that specific fact, I think, by saying that, you know, there's this fossil record of of, uh, of evolution. I'm not entirely sure if Ball is being entirely uh, 
speaking with clarity intentionally here because he says after that you can't trust that rather i believe in the old legends and myths and then a few paragraphs yeah. later he'll say something yeah. that directly contradicts that yeah, yeah. where so he I says don't oh don't listen to an old man rambling like as if and even even later on he says no nah, those are just fairy tales that do a yeah. man's heart good or something like that yeah. So it leaves um, the player with an ambiguous idea of what his intention actually is down here, because he appears to be a man of science, and he also believes in myths and legends. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but they're kind of um, merging the science and the myths and legends within this game, if the ethos is the one that's preaching the science. Yeah, right? the theory of evolution. I just yeah, thought it was I a was really, about that. it's just a really, like, strange kind of piece of irony that the institution that is clearly going to be something that is uh, treated with some contempt in the game, right? The institution, the church itself. Mm -hmm. um, yet... But they teach the proper, they teach the correct... The theory of evolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, I, it, I think you're right, and that's kind of what I came to, is like, for some reason, the church must not want the people to know that humans advented on this planet 10,000 years that ago. That they were right? not native to this planet. But I'm hmm. curious as to why that matters to them in the large scheme of things. Well, you'd like, think it would be pretty convenient to, uh, given today's world, right, somebody who teaches creationism will believe the Earth was created 7,000 or wherever. What, yeah, four, it's, it's 14, almost like a total years reversal ago, of what they teach. And then 7,000 years ago was Adam and Eve. Yeah. yeah. That, that it would seem that this is a convenient reason to bring that type of doctrine about as opposed to ignoring it completely. They kind of miss an opportunity there, right? Yeah. If the, if the ethos is tied to the resurrection of God that we just saw in the, in the previous conversation with Satan and the Emperor, and the resurrection of God has something to do with the, this, the crash of the spaceship 10,000 years ago, it would make sense that they don't want people to think that humans weren't always here because... If God has something to do with that specific spaceship, then all of that information should be controlled by the ethos so that they can't, so that others won't, you know, co-opt their scenario. Yeah, I still just don't get why they wouldn't go for the easy, low-hanging fruit of humans were created 10,000 years ago. I still yeah. don't, like, that, that wouldn't spark curiosity for people to go out and find a ship, you know? It that, just, yeah, that makes, a, that makes a lot more sense, too, yeah. But I love, <laughs> I love how Bart... What, what about all this evolution talk? It almost sounds like Dumb and Dumber, kind of. Like, what, yeah. you said I had a chance. What was this one in a million talk? What about this theory of evolution that everyone's been going on about these days? Yeah, it's, and like, it's like, like this hip it's topic kind of, everyone's that, talking about. Exactly. It's evolution. Everyone's like, it's the hot thing that the been church is it, teaching. Like, been what? reading it in the newspapers. Yeah, that is kind of funny. That is kind of funny. Uh, anyways, I just, we'll probably... Comment it, on well, this, this again, may just be but. one of the many ways that the Church of Xenogears versus the many churches of Earth don't coincide. They aren't they aren't quite the same thing, you know. Yeah. Um, so myths and legends. Uh, Balthazar says, "Haven't you heard the story?" And so he goes into the, I guess, the religion or, or the myths and legends. Like we know what happened because we saw it, but it's, it's no. interesting to see how this has sort of been and diluted. <laughs> By myths and legends over time, right? Yes, but he tells the real story in the myth. <laughs> so, well, so if the ethos is trying, the myth, I know, right? but if the ethos is trying to not get people to look for the things, but the mythology right. says that there's the things and the hard, well, the, how can but you, that, but the church know, is teaching something. Yeah, why? So, so the mythology I, I may not mean. be taught by anybody. The mythology may only be a very small handful of people that have passed down this oral tradition. I, I the guess the church nor the public schools teach. That myth, right? <laughs> I think you definitely should revisit this conversation once you get a, a little bit deeper yeah. into yeah, the Yeah, I uh, feel like it's really, I should probably Yeah, because the, the ethos itself, you'll, you'll have a lot of unpacking to do once you understand more about their nature. Yeah. Okay, so Balthazar gives the story here. They say that humans and God live together in a paradise in the sky. With God's protect protection, there was no fear of death and natural disasters were entirely unknown. Then one day the humans ate a forbidden fruit which gave them incredible wisdom. Now, just keep in mind the Gnostic reinterpretation of the Garden of Eden in mind mm -hmm. as you're going through this. But God drove mankind from the paradise for their sin. Demiurge. The demiurge drove mankind from paradise for their sin. 
better at having been driven, uh, or bitter Bitter, at having been driven out of paradise, humans used the wisdom they had gained to make giants. So they used the gnosis they had gained to make giants. With these giants, they planned to challenge God himself. But God poured his wrath down on them. All who defied God were destroyed, but God himself did not escape unharmed. Taking paradise with him, the wounded God buried himself deep, deep beneath the ocean to sleep for aeons. Before going to sleep, God used his remaining power to create a right-hearted hum- or to create right-hearted humans to live on this planet. These people are said to be our ancestors. So, I want to laugh like really hard, but <laughs> it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> The theory of evolution, the church takes that mythology and is like, no, nah, Adam and Eve, there's just an evolution. There's no Adam and Eve. <laughs> That's this why is the it church feels weird teaching to me. Yeah, so. like why the ethos anyway. So, um, yeah, that's fascinating, though. So the part that so it's pretty straightforward. It's like, oh, the mythology says that God and then the descendant, and okay, I kind of get all that more or less for, through playing the game. That that's kind of more or less what's going on. It's the last few sentences there that that strike me for the most part, where he says that God created new a new set of humans mm-hmm. to live on Earth. Um, I don't know that that just kind of I guess I'll just wait to see how that works it may have something to do with the lambs versus the Abel because there's a separation there's the the surface dwellers and then there's the other people and so but one of them is not technically connected with the other one right mm-hmm. like God created separate humans that's that's interesting I'm, yeah that's what I uh, did not know it's also interesting that it's steeped in metaphor but it also uses the word the, the specific word giants which which is a game with giant robots, so it, yeah. it takes the a Nephilim. little pull from that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so anyways, he ends up telling you there are these two sensors. you got to go disengage in order to open the path so you can get to the exit and escape this place. So you run out and do that, and you come back. And this is where I wanted to get back into the, because uh, I didn't have time to copy this over, um, the, the dialogue with Balthazar and Bart and Faye in this Part of it is also really heavy foreshadowing again. Um, is this the right place? Okay, yeah. So, you know, he's like, okay, we, we did it, you know, deal's done, I opened the door. And then Bart says, uh, I've heard, he, he's like, um, something I wanted to ask you. And Balthazar says, what is it? And Bart says, I've heard somewhere on this planet is a gear far superior to all others. Mm. I've heard it was called the God Gear. And this is Bart talking. Yeah. yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it's is this Bart talking. Yeah, he's the one that started talking about that. No, I'm, I'm just wondering if, because we've had a couple of times where this guy who wrote this um, fact. Oh, like, he got it wrong. Did it wrong. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, he, he oh, does I don't, call it, I don't recall. He does call it the God Gear. Okay. At first, yes. Okay. And eventually they, they come to the term Omni Gear. That term is uttered at this point. Okay, yeah. I've heard it was called the God Gear and was made in ancient times but was hidden away somewhere. Do you know anything about it? And the old man says, a man-made God, created with the wisdom of God. Uh, Such a gear would have the power of a thousand gears. In a wave of its arm, it could destroy whole cities. Now that that immediately brought to mind Lahan Village. Now Mm -hmm. Lahan Village is not a city, but I mean, the Veltal just (laughs) blasted Mm -hmm. away, right? So Um, it's a... The nuclear weapons, yeah. basically. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's uh, battle cries would thunder in the heavens. You must be speaking of the Omni Gear. And Bart says, you know of it? Then perhaps it was uh, what you were speaking about in the tale you told us of the battle with God. And Bao says, goodness gracious, you two boy, these stories were made to inspire men's soul. But <laughs> earlier he said he believed in the <laughs> myths yeah, Exactly. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. It's, <laughs> Do you think it's maybe that, like he realized Bart was sniffing too much truth and had to dispel it immediately? Yeah, maybe, right? And he's trying to like get him off the path. Bart should have said, I think we have it outside, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll but they're there. only but they're only legends, says Bell. They don't really exist. Anyway, allow me to take a look at your gears. It'll only take me a little while, so wait here, please. So he goes out to take a look at the gears. And then Bart and Faye have a conversation. Okay, hey, so I, I thought this was the case. It's not called Omni Gear in Japanese. It's called Ball calls it something else, right? Yeah, he Ball Gia calls it Gumbi. Bara. Oh yeah, Bara, Bara is what it says in the Japanese. So it is not God Gear. Thanks for catching that. I'm, I may have um, it. I think that, I think that's a reference to. Dang it, wrong 
Hang on, I think it's a reference to something in Hebrew. I've got here on the um, on the uh, Xenogears uh, study guide bl dot blogspot dot com. It's got a lot of good translation notes. Uh, yeah. It says the Japanese word says gear bara. Bara is a Hebrew word meaning to create, manufacture something out of nothing. Normal gears. Oh, are bau rao. It's bau rao, right? That's the Hebrew word. That's that's in the yeah. beginning of the uh, Hebrew scriptures. Elohim bau rao It's a. Uh, it's okay. That makes sense now. So the bau rao gear, the creation gear, the creator gear. That's interesting. Oh. I am actually aware of that word. That is so funny. And in Japanese, it's so funny. You hear it in Japanese, and then you re see the real word, <laughs> the and it's like, oh, or... that's what they were saying. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, this con it's, this exchange is a testament to like what the what Richard Honeywood had to go through to get to yeah. get what we to get where we are. It's amazing that he had to do all that. Well, yeah, holy cow! Such dude. a technical script, right? Really difficult. So it's um, it's ba it's Gia Bara that was translated into Omni Gear. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Wow. That is fascinating. Uh, okay. So he says, hey, wait. Ah, oh, he's gone. That was Bart. And then Faye says, hey, Bart, do you think the gear in that story buried in the, is buried in the ground somewhere? And Bart says, I think that's what I've heard. And Faye says, could one of the gears we are using possibly be it? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty heavy. That's a little heavy. Here's an on-the-nose line, everybody. <laughs> it is. But at the same time, we, I, I had suspected that we were in the great gear yeah. and that we were destined to do great things with this gear and that no other gear was quite this strong. Yeah. I was I could tell that from earlier on than this point. Yeah, there's so something I don't special mind about the heavy it. I mean, this is gear. why Kislev and Ave are fighting so hard over it. Right. Right. Like clearly it's a special gear. Yeah. So uh, it is funny that Bart came to this on his own though. <laughs> like has he noticed something about us using the well, gear that made him think that? He I definitely know he, does in a, he in does a minute later. against the boss we fight after this. But not at this point, right? But I wonder if before then, yeah, anyway. Well, it, it, I mean, he noticed that, I mean, he saw it from like his little uh, sand submarine. He was like looking at it, right? Oh, yes, he was before like, Ooh, he attacked. That, that's like a new model or whatever. Like, we want the that X one. Like, that one's special. Or something. So, okay, yeah. Um, hmm. So Bart says, yeah, right. What are the chances of that happening? And Faye's kind of quiet. And then Bart says the gears are uh, the gears that are excavated lately are usually only a few hundred years old, nowhere nearly as old as the gear in that legend. And then Faye says, then why were they in the ground? And Bart says, I don't know. There are no records except except what says Faye. And then Bart says there must be some truth in the tales. They were buried after a great war. The bullet wounds covering most of the gears would appear to confirm that. Faye says, you mean there are no records from the last several hundred years? How about before that? And Bart says, none from either period. The ethos controls all the records from that time period. Maybe they had some very ancient records too. All we know about our history is from little pieces that, were, that we find ourselves. Anyway, Faye, what do you make of the old man? So they have no record, at least lambs, surface dwellers, have like no record of their history. <laughs> they have no idea where they come from. And it's aside important from to... What, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Mm. It, it's important to the ethos that they don't know what their nature is. Right. So, um, so they these people are pretty much blind, except from what they can kind of just, you know, piece together from what they're excavating, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there are records mm -hmm. that are older, but they belong to the ethos. But the control. ethos controls that stuff, yeah. right? Um, Faye says, what do you mean? Bart says, uh, why would such an old man live alone in this abandoned cave? Faye says, I don't know, probably digging for ancient gears or something? Bart says, right. You think so too? And then Faye says, hey, I just said that as a joke. Don't take all that stuff seriously. They're only legends, you know. And of course, myth and legends are always true in RPGs. No, every uh, time. Bart says, no, that old man is up to something. And then suddenly, Bal cries out, this can't be. Faye, you know, they go running over there. What's wrong, old man? And he says, is this your gear? And Faye says, well, sort of. <laughs> Bal says, where did you get it? <laughs> and Faye says, I'm borrowing it. And uh, Bal says, this is the host of the spirit of the slayer of God. Well, so we just had... red when he says that too. Yeah. Hmm. And this, we just had a conversation with Graf about how his whole purpose is to kill Mother God, right? And that he wants Faye's power to pilot this thing to do yeah. it. And now Bal is saying that this gear is the host of the Slayer of God. Anyway, 
I just did not remember this stuff being so heavy-handed early on. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I feel like it's a li it's like it lacks subtlety in a way that I just didn't remember. I think this I mean, game's that, so yeah. ornate and complex, and there's so many terms to remember that you don't remember what you didn't remember, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Like, those memories were extinguished 10, 15, 20 years ago. Like, you, yeah. you may have been smarter than you thought you were. Maybe. It, this and game it, does a pretty good job of, of spacing out the these the, these weird bits of foreshadowing with like really awesome moments. I mean, we went from the motorcycle to the the, the moonshot, and we're about to see another couple cool shots of robots, and all this stuff is sprinkled in between. So what I remember from when I played this originally as a teenager was like mostly the cool stuff, but all yeah. of these little bits of foreshadowing are just they're there and they don't stop for a yeah, long time. It, it's, it's a very long game, yeah, and so like there is so much that just happens and happens and happens that, like I said, I mean, I just totally even, like, forgot that one cutscene even existed at all. And so, like, there's clearly a lot of room for as you try to cram new revelations into your brain and put it together that, like, you just can't maintain a handle on everything, right? And so maybe, maybe uh, understanding that Takahashi you know, felt that it was important to really clue you in on some stuff to try to like make sure you understand that it's important, right? And like you need to know this for later. Um, but I, again, I wanted to kind of ask you about what you make of all of this having no. not played the game before. I, I don't mind the early exposition stuff, the, and I don't know all this game has to offer. So I don't know if, if it's heavy handed or not. It seems to me that we are we have learned something very important about our destiny and one of the i think maybe where this game may um do well i suppose is that you might not be expecting this is like mid 90s maybe late 90s you're not necessarily expecting to kill god necessarily when you first start playing the game yeah. and so even when people come up to you and say we're going to kill god like graph does graph talk about killing god yeah I mean, it's his whole purpose. He's a bad guy, though. Yeah. So it's like, oh, this thing's going to kill God. You may still, upon your first playthrough of this game, you may still be of the opinion that we're not going to kill God. They're going to kill God, and we're going to stop them, and we might, we're might we going to save God. But then you also as have inserted into this side Tan and the Emperor talking about resurrecting God. Yes, and they're and the so good guys. Hard well, the like, Emperor doesn't look like a good it's guy. It's hard at to all. determine who's yes, yes, good but at and the, who's not. at the moment, Satan seems <laughs> good-ish. Now this deal with the Emperor is weird, but he he seems good-ish to me. And so, um, and so, clearly, Graf bad, Satan good. That's where we're at here. Graf resurrect God, or no, Graf kill God, Satan resurrect God. So the fact that. And I understand what happens because I, I am aware of this theme. But the fact that they're saying, ooh, someone's going to kill God, d you, you wouldn't know necessarily from this that that's what you were going to do. Mm. You would be thinking, oh, some evil bad guy wants to kill God. Or we aren't going to let that happen. Prophesied. We're going to save God or God can't be killed or something like that along those lines. Um, that would okay. maybe be where this wouldn't seem so heavy-handed because it's like, oh, the enemy's plan. Ha-ha, <laughs> he wants to destroy the world. Well, we're not going to let him, right? Okay. All I, right. Think, yeah, I think what you're doing there is really important, though, to like begin to keep track of the motives of every, of every one of these individuals because you have, like, you can assume that Saiten and the Emperor are kind of on the same team. Groff has a team, and then kind of Faye has his own interest. And... Uh, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say there are going to be more parties introduced to the, this various network of conspiracies, and keeping track of all those throughout the throughout the first playthrough is key to understanding the the, the story at large, at least the motives themselves. With your uh, is, your mental mm. yarn board, have like a character and then like a, a morality scale that says good and evil, and then you just keep <laughs> moving the slider based on where you think they are. Yeah, <laughs> that works too. yeah, yeah. That, is, that is the one thing that I think is possibly my favorite aspect of this game is the sheer number of villains, the conflicting motivations between them, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and just trying the amount of screen time that they get. Because this is one thing that um, I hadn't really ever seen in any of like Xenogears contemporaries, right? They kind of make it very, very clear. This guy is bad. 
he's he's the villain. You 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 want to kill this guy? Like this guy's a bad person, right? It's very clear, like the mm -hmm. distinction between who's bad and who's good. Um, but in Xenogears, like they do this absolutely phenomenal job with their villains, and with like clearly defining why they want what they want, and making it making you understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really important for villains. Like, I, I really like villains that are complex characters themselves and that we understand what their fears are. We understand that there are limits on them. You know, a lot of times it feels mm -hmm. like the, the protagonists get all the limits uh, and all the conflict <laughs> right, yeah. and the villains are kind of just stringing them along all the time and they'd have, mm -hmm. but I love it when villains themselves also have like, oh, if we don't do this, then, you know, and, and, and they have stakes So too. it's like they're going on their own hero's journey of yeah. fulfilling their own destinies mm -hmm. that's like different from ours. I think, I think it's that's really cool. cool when you have not only your protagonist, but also your villains that have <laughs> conflict and that they have fears and there are possibilities of them failing and they realize that. And so they're, you know, trying to figure it out too. And, and Xenogears does this at a level that is just some of the best I've ever seen in anything. Hmm. Um, it's the villains are some of the best parts of the game, in my opinion. And one thing I think that's unique about the set of villains here is that their their motivations change throughout the course of the game as yeah. new factors are introduced and as they learn more information, as the player learns information, the the motives and the allegiances of these things of these characters shift. It's not like you you're not going to figure out who the end boss is until you get to the end boss. Really, like you never know who's yeah. that who's that top dog on the villain chart. Yeah, hmm. it's fantastic. So, um, okay. Uh, then Balthazar's like, get out of here. You guys freak me out. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk to us anymore. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, questions. I want nothing to do with you. Don't talk to me anymore. Go away. So you leave and... Uh, Wait, did you go all ahead. go back in and talk to him? I, I did, and because I, I went back to, um, I think, buy some parts or something like that. Yeah, and the line he, he said? Go ahead, because I can't remember it right it's now. It's not in the script. Uh, you can go back, and if you try to buy more parts, he'll sell them to you, but he'll say, when Calamity beats you, I'll just get all these parts back. Yes, yes. I yes. saw. I did see that. Yeah. I'm just yeah. going to get all my parts back when Calamity beats you anyway, yeah. so I, I guess I'll sell these to you as long as you understand. Because when you encounter Calamity, it's kind of ambiguous. Like, whose is this? What's happening? But this attributes responsibility directly to Val. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's the next boss you fight, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's yeah. also, like, are, are you do you... Uh, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> so you, anyways, you go into, okay, you, you push forward into what was previously blocked off. You get up there yeah. and you fight this boss, Calamity. It's a big gear. Um, and defeat that. And then uh, you resurface. You go back up to the desert. And I really like that shot where they're kind of oh, standing yeah. there. And really it kind of, cool. it's, like it's like a dolly out. And it kind of pushes out from this, the, it's like the capital, the capital city of yeah. Ave out there in the distance. And they're just kind of standing there looking at it. Just a really nice composition. The, the cinematography in this game is phenomenal. It's Thank very good. Guys. It's very it's good. Really good. <laughs> yeah. um, so it pulls out, and that's kind of where they have their conversation about, um, yo, uh, I would, like, settle this with you right now, but, um, you know, they're just going to see us fighting out here. They'll come capture us, so let's hold off for a little bit. Yeah, let's Let's wait. go, uh, you know... Rendezvous with Yggdrasil, my, my sand cruiser. And so they go do that. And that was pretty much where we had decided to leave off for this, for this episode. So we will continue yeah. on from there next time. I guess, so how we knew, or how he knew to go there, this was a question that we asked him earlier. We said, like, are they going to come rescue us? And Bart's like, uh... What he, he says, the funniest thing, he says, we had a liberal upbringing. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure that they're just going to let me take care of this myself. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea was, and I think Satan or somebody asked, um, Sib, Sib, Sigurd, um, Sigurd, Sigurd. Yeah. Um, like, hey, what are you going to do? Where are we going to find him? And they're like, yeah, we'll just go back to our hideout, and then they'll meet us there if they're still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, okay. So they had like a rendezvous point that they would agree. Yeah. To, like, if we get separated, we meet here. And so that's where we go. So that's Although where you go. It Although it seems like the the crew of the Yggdrasil is like, they're kind of annoyed with Bart most of the time. Like there's a yeah. lot of uh, yeah, no, but they seem to trust him as well. Like he's not going to die; he's going to turn back up. Well, he certainly yeah. has enablers yes. and then people who try to keep him in check as well. So it's like a tug of war with whatever he's supposed to be yeah. doing there. Bart is a fantastic yeah. character. 
Yeah. yeah cool. Well, I think Sigurd mentions that too, because Satan was like, so is Bard just shooting at anything and everything he sees? And Sigurd's like, no, this was calculated. Uh, but they're like, well, I hate him. But <laughs> this was a very calculated attack. This was not yeah. random. <laughs> like, uh, Satan's like, all right, whatever. And then yeah. when, he, when he shows back up, uh, they're basically telling him to apologize. And he's like, yeah, well, I said so I was good. wrong. Yeah. It's like, no, is it's not enough apology? to say is you were apology? wrong. You got, and they like, they like lead him away by his ears. By like his ear, by his yeah, ear. yeah. So that, that kind of shows his age, I guess. He's not, he's, I guess, like late teens, probably the same yeah. age as, uh, hmm. as Faye, right? So yeah. he's still kind of a kid. Uh, but anyways, I think we'll leave off there for now. All right. Any, anything else that you guys took notes on or anything you wanted to say before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think we got it all. Anything else? I just have one um, kind of a, a localization uh, thing that I enjoy here, along with tinkering with junk in backyard. If you, it's a, it's ahead of the section, but if you talk to the guy in the gear shop uh, on the Egdrasil, he says oh, the that gear with the slender build withstood Brigandier's rod. Oh, <laughs> which like that has to be deliberate, I think. <laughs> I'll look into that. That yeah, is funny. That's, that's that where you go funny. buy parts on yes, the it's, where you buy parts it's in that room. There's there like there's some that. some three guys in there talking. Yeah. And like Breaking Deer has a, a whip, not a rod, so I don't you know. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was funny too. Is like, it's like um, the gears that each character uses, their weapons correspond to what the person uses on foot. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. Faye is a hand to hand martial artist, so his gear fights hand to hand. Yeah, and that's right. Bart uses whips. Oh, we didn't so. bring that part up then. When when after we meet with the old man and come back, then we execute some crazy like martial art kung oh, fu attack. Right. Yep. So we execute this crazy attack because Bart, I think we knocked it over, right? It was an older gear that was responding. I don't know exactly Calamity, what it was Calamity, that on. boss, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that challenge. was Calamity. And, it, and it gets back up. We knock it down. Bart like turns around. He's like, okay, hey, we're done with that. And then it gets up and it's about to like kill Bart from behind, and Bart's really slow at turning around. <laughs> Very slow. And um, so Faye's like, look out! And we do this like, it's like thousand, thousand fist punch or something. Yeah, this he kind of blacks out too. It. He turns into dust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of crazy. Faye so he executes quite... this wild move, and Bart's like, how'd you do that? And we're like, uh, I don't know how I did that. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to do it, and it happened. And Bart's how like, no, no, tell me, tell me how you did, did that. And he's like, I don't know. What did I tell you about yesterday? <laughs> but yeah, how do we differentiate <laughs> that from what Faye did in Lahan Village? Because Faye went complete there, but he kind yeah, of Yeah, it so it's almost like, um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, almost like it's he's like, learning he's a not subtle completely, control. He didn't completely lose it this time. Yeah, he yeah. did it in a safe and effective way to move past an obstacle. And that's However, kind of what, at the same what, time, Bart isn't exactly like at the center of his heart, right? Like, he wanted to save Bart, but not like Timothy, like, not or like Timothy Alice. or Alice, yeah, mm. or, or um, Dan or any of those guys. It's like I just met this guy. I'd rather he not die, but like I'm not gonna like kill myself trying to save. Yeah, him. so maybe right. it's not like a trigger that's as strong. It's not as strong. But I would say that has. Th I think this also relates to what Saitan was saying back in back in Black Moon Forest, where he's like to use power or be used by power, right? Like Oh, that's a matter of here, the heart. Here, matter of the heart. Yes, that's and what he says. here, uh, Faye was able to use the power, not be used by it. Mm. And it's in part, I think, because his emotions weren't Yeah, the trigger so wasn't crazy. Inten like intense enough to send yeah. him over the edge, right? Um, but anyway, Interesting. glad you brought that up because we won't forget. Yes. Very important fight. All right. Um, I forgot to look up where we're going to play to for the next one, so I'll put in an addendum <laughs> here and tell people where to play up to. But thank you guys for joining us again. It's a pleasure. Uh, real yes. quick, uh, uh, say your channel again one more time. Yes, our podcast is called Retrograde Amnesia. Uh, we do have our audio on YouTube, but we're also, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those good places. Uh, and um, I knew that your first, uh, or the, the, the second episode came out today because I looked at my phone and people were, subscribing to our YouTube channel. So thank you for awesome. having us on. We don't get a lot of activity on YouTube. Most of our activity is on, um, you know, on podcast platforms. Because so you're most see. audio only, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. yes. And, um, and so, yeah, check us out there. We've done a, uh, a full 55-episode uh, analysis of, of, of Xenogears. Um, we've done Chrono Cross, and we next week we are launching our Final Fantasy VIII series. So we'll look forward to that. I'm it's very awesome. excited for that one. Yeah. I'm really excited for that one. Disc 2 of Xenogears does nothing wrong. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this two did nothing wrong, so uh, uh, I, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store to uh, to discuss this, this two. Be because begin like, the meme creation. Yes, we'll like see. literally, the your podcast will literally then become a book club and not just a video game <laughs> analysis. That's that. true. I don't know. But near, we're, we're playing near. Vast swaths of near are That's basically true. just. Yeah, just visual, I'm really looking yeah, forward to novels. Yeah, I've got to finish near so I can so I can uh, listen to your podcast. I'm looking forward. Oh, to did you get near replicant? Yes, I have, I've, I've played Automata, but I have not played uh, Replicant. I've only played about, uh, yeah. I don't know, like 10 hours of it or so. Play it, man. It's a great game. It's yeah, a great game. for sure. All right, fellas. Thanks for joining us, and thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you again next week. Peace out.